on the Five Live team this evening covering a game like this. Pat obviously represented his country 28 times. James did it 48 times. Scored some big goals for Scotland. Know what it's like to play in these games. And I think both of them would dearly love to be involved in a playing capacity uh, on an occasion like this. But the 11 men to represent Scotland from the start, knowing a point is enough tonight to get them to the Euros next summer, having been at the last Euros as well, so it'd be back-to-back -back qualifications, but this one would be done in very different style. Angus Gunn uh, in goal, winning his seventh cap for his country. Back three tonight, Kieran Tierney's out injured, so that's Ryan Porteous, Jack Hendry, who've both been regulars in this qualification campaign. Nottingham Forest, Scott McKenna comes in alongside them. The captain, Andy Robertson, wide on the left. Aaron Hickey of Brentford on the right. Scott McTominay and Callum McGregor in central midfield. John McGinn and Ryan Christie uh, in support of Lyndon Dykes. The Spanish team as the, uh, the hoardings and the banners are taken down. The pitch is... Uh, just being clear, we're getting ready to go. They've got Unai Simon in goal, regular number one for Spain. Uh, Danny Carvajal of Real Madrid at right back. Barcelona's 19-year-old Alex Balde at left back. A relatively new centre-back pairing, Robin Lenormand of Real Sociedad, gained a Spanish citizenship uh, in May. He's played the last four internationals alongside Imeric Laporte who now plays his club football out in Saudi Arabia alongside Cristiano Ronaldo and Sadio Mane. How about this for a midfield three? Gavi, Rodri and Mikel Marino, uh, also of Sociedad, one of three Sociedad players in the starting lineup for Spain tonight. Ferran Torres, formerly of Manchester City, scored a hat-trick against Germany in a Nations League game a few years ago when he played in this stadium. Mikel Oyarzabal and Alvaro Morata, formerly of Chelsea, uh, playing up front and captaining the side. He scored a hat-trick last month in the 7-1 win away to Georgia. We're underway. Spain in bright red shirts, very familiar to those of you uh, who've watched your World Cups and your major tournaments uh, with the sort of yellow trim, yellow numbers on the back, possibly gold, you'd say, actually. Blue shorts, blue socks, bit of red in the socks as well. And Scotland all in white this evening, playing from left to right. They've won themselves an early throw just inside the Spanish half. Ryan Porteous throws it into space. It's easily intercepted. Rodri gets his first touch of the evening and Scott McTominay didn't quite have chance to get the kind of challenge in that James McFadden was talking about. And Spain will start to play out from the back. Gavi on the ball. And uh, it will be slow and steady. And actually, Pat, on a night like tonight in terms of temperatures, because the air is still so thick and is. sticky, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it's, it's kind of hard to play fast flowing football in this. And especially if you're chasing the ball about, which I suspect uh, a lot of the Scotland players will be for three years of this game. However, if we were told we were rubbish by Rodri. Do you know what? I don't want Scotland to be rubbish. I want it to be quite horrible to play against tonight. Right, first attack for Spain. Morata playing a ball into the penalty area. Oh, it's put wide by Torres. Fabulous opportunity for Spain to go a goal up with just over a minute played. Scotland was sliced apart. Perfect pass from Morata. Torres one-on-one -on -one, under slight pressure from Andy Robertson. He just put it the wrong side of the post. It's a very poor miss. A very, very bad miss. You're one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper. You've got to get it on target. You know, it's probably maybe just a little bit if you're going to give him some sort of excuse. But the ease in which they went through that Scottish A midfield then defence, no one got near it. A beautiful chance for Spain. Nice flick on from John McGinn on the volley. It was a long clearance by the goalkeeper, Angus Gunn. Balde is... I mean, I want to say barged into by Lyndon Dykes. Basically, he knew Lyndon Dykes was coming up behind him, stopped in his tracks. Dykes bumped into him, and he went down and won the free kick. There's plenty of defender that has been known to do that over the years, so Dykes has to know that. It's uh, an easy free kick to give away. Don't, don't allow that. Don't allow them easy possession. A vast stadium, and, and, and from our sort of viewpoint back here, the pitch looks absolutely massive down there uh, as well. Lots of space for Spain and Scotland to try and weave their pretty patterns. And that's what Spain are doing at the moment. Early stages, Spain nil, Scotland nil. Balde's ball down the left. Morata receives with his back to goal. Corner of the penalty area. Slightly misplaced pass. Well read by Laporte, who came steaming forward from centre-back. Rodri keeps it moving uh, and plays it across his own half to Danny Carvajal. Ball comes back to the halfway line. Scotland have every single player behind the ball inside their own half. Spain nil, Scotland nil. Laporte to Oyarzabal, looking for a pass 
into the central channel. Gavi is tackled, then a sliding interception by Porteous, and Spain win the first corner of the evening. Pat Nevin. Well, we're less than three minutes into the game, and we can see the pattern. That's going to happen in this game. Scotland going to get pushed back a bit. The way Scotland are lined up, really, when they lose the ball, it's a very, very clear 5-4, and one up top, and even that one up top. Mr Dykes is coming back as often as he possibly can, so it's going to be a long, hard slog tonight for Scotland. Keeping an eye on Cyprus, Norway in this group this evening as well, has also kicked off at 7.45 UK time. Norway knowing they need to win all three remaining games in this group to even have a chance of finishing above Scotland. Scotland need a point tonight, and they're there. Corner for Spain, long delay as our referee just sorts out the, uh, the argy-bargy around the penalty spot. Curling ball into the near post. I think it's Hendry who's up there to win the header, and behind it goes for another corner to Spain. Vast spaces, big semi-circular space, a bit like Hamden Park, actually, behind, is, yeah. behind each goal. A little bit sort of higher camber, a little bit better look to it. Another corner then, Ferran Torres, deep breath, whips it in with his right foot, again to the near post, right across the face of goal, and Morata at the far post, the angle was so tight, he couldn't direct the header on target, and he's taken a whack to the side of the head, so he's going to need a little bit of treatment, but Scotland have been under pressure uh, in the opening minutes here. The quality of those two corners was absolutely fantastic. They were whipped really viciously into that near post there. It's going to have to scream, make sure that they can get someone in front of that near post. Far too easy to get a little knock on there. Nearly scored again, that's two good opportunities already for Spain. Scotland under pressure on the ball inside their own half. Callum McGregor, heels snapped out by young Gavi who won the tackle and the ball's out for a Scotland throw. Can I ask you a question? Stevie mm. Clark's out in his technical area. Have you ever <laughs> seen a bigger technical <laughs> area in your entire life? Uh, well, uh, West Ham <laughs> is one stadium that has technical areas Pretty akin close. to those, yeah. yeah. I know what you mean, though, Bats. It's, uh, it's, it's 40 yards, isn't it, from the bench to, to the edge of the pitch. But Steve Clark clearly immediately want, wants to get a couple of messages out there, Pat, because Spain has started well. Yeah, so I mean, both of the coaches are like that. They're very lonely out there because... I think they're only allowed to go out there on their own, but he had to get that information across to his defence, which are in line with him just now. Spanish coaches Luis de la Fuente in the dark grey suit, white trainers. Spain have the ball deep in their left-back position, no risk taken there by Robin Lenormand. Just knocks it out for a throw into Scotland, so Scotland have made uh, good ground up the right-hand side. Set-piece chance for them. Lyndon Dykes chosen ahead of Shea Adams yeah. as the centre-forward. Yeah, no, trying to hold the ball, use his physicality, but very noticeable there. Aaron Hickey, really far up the field, in open play. Scotland are going to try and break. They are going to try and break, and when they do so, they will do so in numbers, as they have here for this long throw. Scored early when they beat Spain back at Hampden Park in March. Dykes long throw into the penalty, reaches the penalty spot, headed away. Now Hickey's got some defending to do. Under pressure from Morata, holds him off, keeps the ball, and good pass for the outside of his left foot. Dykes has stayed wide. First time cross comes in behind everyone. McTominay's in there, of course he is, sliding in, trying to get a right boot on the ball. Referee's whistle blows. Yeah. For a challenge, was it in the penalty? I think the Spain McTominay play? one was uh, given as a free kick there. Uh, but McTominay was in that place. You're absolutely right. Scotland getting down the right-hand side there. Dangerous cross in there. There's a little bit of panic in that box there. I, I think McTominay was a little bit late for it when he was making the tackle, only because he's got in to it. Do you know, I've looked at it again. There's nothing wrong with that. No foot on ball, Pat. And yeah. I think he's thinking, I could score here, as in if I get the proper contact on that, could surprise the keeper. Nil-nil. McTominay, of course, who scored the two late goals for Manchester United in the win against Brentford at the weekend. Six goals in five games in this group for Scotland. I was looking at the top scorers in Euro 2024 qualifying today. Lukaku is top amongst all the countries on eight. Then you've got McTominay alongside Rasmus Hoyland, and he's above Kane, Ronaldo, Mbappe, Haaland, Saka and Bruno Fernandes. Yeah, I was talking to someone earlier today who called them McTominay. <laughs> Maybe pushing that a bit there. A <laughs> little bit. Uh, ball forward from Laporte is, is a loose one. Uh, Andy Robertson intercepts, bit of ground to run into, and then slides a pass down the left. Asks Ryan Christie to sprint and catch that. He's beaten to that ball by Lenormand. Plays back to the goalkeeper, Simon. Header won by Callum McGregor. Here's McTominay in the middle of the Spain half. McGinn, with three red shirts around him, eventually loses that ball, and McGregor comes scampering back to try and win it. Morata's pass is cut out there by Scott McKenna, who's in this team for the injured Kieran Tierney tonight. And Christie now makes a run down the left and crosses that ball in. And it's cleared away uh, with his right foot by Mikel Marino for Spain, throwing for Scotland on the left. Yeah, a very good couple of minutes for Scotland. You can hear the fans in the background reacting to this. 
And it's what Stevie Clark said, you can sit and defend for the entirety of the game. And they're not getting all their own way, are they, Spain? Scotland, when they attack, it's not just one or two players. They're flooding forward. You know, the entire midfield goes there. It's not tentative. This is a team that thinks, we've got a right good chance here. Throw in towards the edge of the Spain penalty area. Lenormand has a swing at it and sends the ball straight up in the air. Headed back up in the air by McKenna. Rodri gets his body in the way. Then it's flicked forward. Christie will chase this down to the byline. He's never going to get there. Just gives Lenormand a little shove in the back as he covers the ball back behind uh, for the goal kick to Spain. Um, one result in the qualifiers so far today. Of interest to Wales, actually. And it's, it's good news, I think, for Wales because Armenia, level on points with Wales, uh, lost 2-0 away to Latvia. So you've got Croatia and Turkey playing this evening at the top of that group on 10 points. Wales host Croatia on Sunday. We'll have commentary on that game on Radio 5 Sports Extra. Kicks off at 7.45. Wales and Armenia on seven points, but Armenia have now played a game more than Wales. Poland one up away to the Faroe Islands this evening. This is Spain nil, Scotland nil in the company of Pat Nevin in sweltering Seville in the Estadio de la Cartuja. And the cross from Danny Carvajal is easily headed away by McKenna. Uh, Rodri goes striding back to collect the ball under no pressure. Is that the Scotland fans booing Rodri? I think yes. it is. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. They have not forgotten that and will not do for quite some time. Interesting to see the, the Spanish team. The thing that I complained about before the game in the World Cup, they just weren't getting the ball in early and it was so easy to defend against because everyone had time to get themselves set. That's different now. They are actually a little bit quicker or have been at the start of this game yeah. for getting those crosses in the middle. It's caused a few problems. Building down the right with Carver. How low cross this time. Reaches Gavi. Gavi stumbles as he tried to set himself to shoot and Hendry was in quickly to intercept for Scotland. Andy Robertson, clever little back heel. Turns away from Carver Hal, but the ball is given away and Balde collects inside his own half of space. Just a little bit of a shame there because Andy Robertson got the ball and did a little trick and looked for his left centre back, which would normally be Tierney, mm. who would be happy to take the ball. McKenna wasn't. And that's maybe a little bit of a difference that Scotland won't be able to get out with that ultra confidence from that sort of area this year, this time. Really interesting watching the movement of the Spanish players from up on high here as they build attacks. The runs made by the likes of Gavi and Ferran Torres darting in from the flanks and popping up in uh, spaces in between Scotland's defence and midfield. John McGinn thought he'd won a throw there on the right inside his own half, but the decision goes against him, so throw him for Spain. Ten minutes in, the other thing from Spain's point of view, so in this group at the moment, they sit in second spot in the table, Scotland on 15 points, Spain with a game in hand on nine points. What they know is, if they win tonight and win away at Norway on Sunday, they then qualify with a couple of games to spare. I think they'll be absolutely fine anyway, Georgia and Cyprus in their last two games. But if they do that, if they beat Norway, that gets Scotland there as well, because Norway have to win their last three games. Uh, ball wide towards Carver. He was thinking about the volleyed cross, but it's headed away by Robertson and out for a, a throw into Spain. Level with the edge of the Scotland penalty area on the right. Albania 1, Czechia 0 uh, in the qualifiers tonight. So... Scotland having to soak up some pressure here. Laporte brings it forward, finds Oyathaba, dribbles to the edge of the penalty area, space is closed down, so he plays it back to young Balde. Laporte's first time passing to Rodri, Rodri able to turn, low ball in towards the edge of the penalty area, Ferran Torres stretches, trying to keep control, eventually Scotland clear, Rodri sees Balde in space on the left, Balde just inside the Scotland penalty area, right-footed shot, hits one of his own players and the ball spins out of the Scottish box and it comes back to Rodri, who's pulling the strings there, just outside the area, Carvajal's ball into the far post, Hendry heads it behind, Scotland thought, it's Porteous, I beg your pardon who had it behind, and Scotland thought there was a push but it's going to be a corner. Yeah, and the Spanish are uh, claiming for a penalty kick and they will claim for absolutely everything at their home ground, you wouldn't be surprised at that. Ball played into the back post. There is going to be a lot of concentration needed from that Scotland back line. So far, they've held pretty strong. Um, another corner kick from this left-hand side for the Spanish. Somewhat slightly surprising to me that they've changed the taker because mm. the first two from Ferran Torres were absolutely extraordinary. They've got Oyarzabal taking it now. Yeah, Oyarzabal curls that in towards the penalty spot and away swinger, headed away. Gavi is all on his own there as he goes racing back to pick up possession again for Spain. Here's Carver Howell, 45 yards out in the inside right channel. Callum McGregor comes chasing towards him to try and put some pressure on the ball, but he's chasing on his own there, and Spain just able to play it around him. Here's Rodri at the base of midfield, just inside the Scotland half. 
Spain nil, Scotland nil. And this is fine for, for Scotland so far, keeping Spain at bay. If you have just tuned in to Five Live and BBC Sounds, an incredible chance in the second minute of the game for Ferran Torres, one on one. And he stuck it wide of the post. Will Spain come to regret that this evening? They continue to keep possession. Laporte involved, centre circle just inside the Scotland half, across to Balde. McGinn makes the challenge. Balde gets the pass away to Ferran Torres. All being played in front of Scotland this at the moment, though. Yeah, and very noticeably, the Scotland players are trying their very, very best to save some, conserve some energy. You have to conserve the energy in these situations where a team that's going to pass around you in a warm night like tonight. But the, the intelligence of the playing from that Scotland midfield is very noticeable at the moment. Here they come again, Spain, and the ball is back with Laporte. Laporte, little pass to his right. He immediately gets that ball back, makes a bit of ground forward. Ten yards from the Scotland penalty area. Morata drops a bit deeper. His pass is intercepted. Callum McGregor brings it away, and Scotland on the break here. Ryan Christie plays back to Hickey. Hickey is on the left there for Scotland for the time being. Back to his goalkeeper, Angus Gunn. Morata comes jogging towards him, and Gunn clears it with his right foot. That's going to go over the head of McGinn, who won't challenge for the header. Chested down by Laporte and Spain have it. Real shame that because um, Scotland slowed the game down there, got it to Angus Gunn there in goalkeeping. Now, if you've got Dykes up there, you've got to hit him. <laughs> if you're going yeah. to play it long, you've got to aim at him. And it was aimed towards McGinn. He's not going to win that one. And uh, easy possession back again for the Spanish. Uh, next break in play here, we'll take you to the city ground because it's uh, Euro qualifiers for the under 21s this evening. England are playing Serbia. So when there's a break in play here, we'll go and check in on. Uh, what's going on there can't take our eyes off Spain at the moment lots of possession early chance for Torres but in the last 10 minutes or so yet to turn all that possession into goal threat but you know that threat is always lurking Marino fires a low pass back here to Lenormand Lenormand just encroaching into the Scottish half then Laporte curling ball in towards the far post attempted header back across goal couldn't quite get enough on that, could Oyarzabal. And cleared down the left by Hickey. Dykes challenges for the ball, and Scotland again can't keep it, and it's straight back to Spain. Yeah, and that will happen. They need to be ready for it. The very noticeable Hickey there, you know, playing over on the left at the moment. He's, and he, he was so calm on the ball, under quite a lot of pressure, and uh, it's, it's, it's just amazing to see such a young player playing at this level and so comfortable. They've been caught in the wrong positions now, the two wing-backs. But they're OK, they'll switch when they get a chance. Yeah, Robertson wide right, Hickey wide left at the moment for Scotland. But they can't switch off because Spain keep coming at them. Here's Rodri in central midfield. Morata makes the run into the inside right channel, just outside the penalty area. Gets his cross into the far post. Robertson heads it behind for the corner. Before that corner, uh, let's get to the city ground. Adam Cotier. England nil, Serbia nil. England have started brightly. Jaden Filigen had a shot deflected and saved past the post. Charlie Cresswell headed the subsequent corner wide when he had a free header in the six-yard area. England nil, Serbia nil. Spain nil, Scotland nil, Cyprus nil, Norway nil. Uh, both of those results in isolation actually good enough uh, for Scotland to qualify for the Euros this evening, but we've only played 16 minutes of each game. Torres' corner, brilliant again into the near post, lovely flick on by Lenormand, and no one got on the end of it. Absolutely beyond me why he didn't take the last corner, because the three that he put in there are, are almost undefendable. I mean, he zipped in at a perfect level there, and the three of three in a row, they've actually managed to get the flick on, but haven't been able to get that man Morata on at the, last, at the back post. Mm. If they keep on doing that, they'll get a very clear chance sooner or oh, later. Scotland have got caught there. Ryan Christie's pass is intercepted. Spain come pouring forward. Oyafa Bal doesn't get enough on the shot. Pass was played a little bit behind him, couldn't get the contact, and it bobbles into the arms of Angus Gunn. It's worth underlining. I mentioned the way Scotland are playing, the way they're defending, the way they're lined up. It's still 83% possession for the Spanish at the moment, yeah. you know, 83%. Now, that was expected, but Scotland at some point have to build the odd bridgehead to give a little bit of respite to that defence and just create something going forward. They've had a couple, you know, two or three minutes where they were doing it. They'll just have to take those chances, hold on to it a little bit, but make mm. sure when it gets up front, it sticks. Well, this is an opportunity, and McGinn gets the ball caught between his feet and he's lost it. So that's exactly what Pat's talking about. Scotland don't get a breather. They've got to get back into their defensive shape. Cross comes into their penalty area, and Oyarzabal tries to control it on the instep of his right boot, and it gets away from him, and Hickey's too strong for him, holds him off, and it goes behind for a goal kick to Scotland, 0-0. Again, Hickey back on his own right-hand side position this time. 
He looks very confident, doesn't mm. he, for play? I mean, I've obviously been keeping my eye on him for a very young age when he started out at Hearts. But he's, he walks us into this level with such comfort, such beliefs, you know. And he looks as if he's been playing there all his life and he doesn't seem to care who he's playing against. Goal kick for Scotland then. So far, so good this evening. And these high temperatures in southern Spain. Uh, the goal kick from Gunn, though, is picked up by Spain inside their own half. Lenormand you know, across to Laporte. Oh, is that happened again there? Scotland played yeah. a long ball. They were, it's as if they didn't want to go and try and attack it, head it. You know, that's where Scotland need to try and win it, to try and, as I say, hold the ball up. Didn't go for it at all there. Uh, Balde moving at speed. McTominay back there, gets a foot in. Then uh, McGregor thumps a pass at McTominay. Did well to control that, and Scotland do have some possession. Ferran Torres closes in on Andy Robertson. Back to Gunn. He had to be sure of his first touch there, right in front of his goal line. Was good with it. Porteous clears, but didn't really know who he was playing that to, and Rodri's gobbled it up for Spain. Rodri tall statuesque figure in central midfield the ball's worked over to the right to Carvajal his cross blocked at close range by Christie comes back to Carvajal on the spin plays to Marino Marino to Rodri Rodri got there just in time McGregor was moving in to try and win it back for Scotland and there's Marino Mikel Marino once off Newcastle in the season at Newcastle uh, joined from Borussia Dortmund, now of Real Sociedad. There's Gavi, lovely player to watch. Always clever turn and release of the pass to Marino. Sees Balde in space on the left-hand side. Spanish fans getting a little more excited at what's building up in front of them. Here in the volley from Oyarzabal is well hit, but over the crossbar and behind for a goal kick to Scotland. Nil nil. Yeah, yeah Balde, the left back, is a very good player to watch. You know, he's a left back, but not in a month of Sundays. He's a left winger, really. We know he is. You know, he wants to get forward. He jinks and tricks like a winger. He wants to get to the byline. So that's a big call. And I can see Stevie Clark having a word right now with McGinn to say, look, you can't let him overload on this left-hand side. Even though Hickey's in that area, he's already got a player to mark down there in front of him. So, and uh, Rathabal. So, yeah, I think he's doing really, really special things, Baldi, at the moment. But so far, hasn't created a clear chance. Guns long clearance over the head of Dykes. Oh, look at that. There's something going on between Laporte and Dykes. They suddenly push their foreheads together, eyeball to eyeball, exchanging words, and the referee steps in and calls them over. The referee's got a very impressive head of jet black hair, which is slicked back. He's a Dutchman, and his name is Serdar, and this is a difficult one, Gozubuyuk. There's oh, four, done. Right, there's... there's an O and three U's in there, and all of them have got umlauts over the, <laughs> over the top of them. Do you know what? Laporte's turned round there and had a go at Dykes. I mean, tempted to say, get lost. There's <laughs> nothing wrong there. It's gone up for a ball, clean as a whistle. No, you're not talking any elbows flailing about. I think Dykes would be delighted that he's kind mm. of hassled and ruffled his feathers a little bit there. Uh, Laporte. On the ball for Spain, plays it to Balde on the left. It comes back to Marino. Marino takes the ball and ships it on quickly to Lenormand. Inside the Scotland half, it goes wide right this time to Ferran Torres. Gavi makes a little diagonal run into space beyond him, but it comes back to Carvajal again. Very patient from Spain. Nations League winners, of course, uh, this summer. While others were playing qualifiers in June, they were beating Italy and then Croatia on penalties to win that tournament, Oyarzabal with a back heel volley, the ball goes up in the air, Mexican wave has started in the stadium here, Scotland players obviously ignore that, and then McGinn loses the ball, as Christie, and it was a couple of swishes there to try and win it back, both on Balde, both missed, both could have been bad fouls, he gets away with it. I have no idea why he's doing that, there's a bit of frustration from Christie there, because he's got the ball and he's in a good position, but he's got no support whatsoever, and without that support he's got frustrated, you cannot allow that to happen against the Spain side. Good defending from Ryan Porteous, getting his body in the way of Oyarzabal as he was chasing a ball down to the byline. And Oyarzabal is complaining that as Porteous moved into him, he sort of half-winded him and, and caught him. And also, Pat, the Mexican wave got as far as the Scotland fans. They're not playing they're not having it. No, they're not having it. <laughs> More so important things tonight to consider the Mexican wave, so... Uh... Just going to watch this again because it's rippling away to our left-hand side. Then it hits the Scotland fans and they don't really go for it. <laughs> so then you get the boos and cheers. There's a big blue blank and then the ripples pick up again uh, on, the, uh, on the side of the pitch opposite to us and it will continue on its way uh, around the ground. But as you say, Pat, Scotland fans have far more important things 
uh, to worry about this evening. Spain qualify for major tournaments all the time. Steve Clark is trying to make it a more regular thing for this Scotland team. And so far, uh, he and they have done an amazing job in this group. Nil-nil at the moment here in Seville, midway through the first half. Commentary tomorrow night uh, of England's friendly game at Wembley against Australia. John Murray alongside Stephen Warnock for that one. Callum McGregor, ball is taken off him in midfield. He complains he was fouled. Morata thought he might shoot from the edge of the box there, trying to flick a ball uh, across to Oyarzabal who's challenging for it, down by the corner flag against Hickey. Hickey gets his body in the way, and he's either won the throw in or the free kick, but whatever, he's done a good job for Scotland. Yep, I mean, Morata's such an important player for them. I mean, consider back in his time when he played at Chelsea. And, I mean, it was the laughing stock for a lot of people. I always knew he was a good technical finisher. He wasn't getting enough um, chances when he was there. But you look at his goal-scoring record for Spain. It's extraordinary, isn't yeah. it? Is it 33 and 66, something Spot like that? On. Spot so, on. I mean, he's, he's an important player, he's a skipper, and at the moment, he's not had a chance yet. So the thing that's winding the Spain fans up the most at the moment seems to be the fact that the, uh, the Scottish fans won't do the Mexican wave. In the meantime, Lyndon Dykes has jumped for a header. This time he's won Scotland a free kick, so that is a chance for Scotland to take a breather, set up for a set piece, try and put a bit of pressure on Spain and just, just give themselves a little release valve in the game. Yeah, Scotland are not in any hurry to take any of these three kicks correctly, so... But yeah, Dykes, we see Scotland want to be horrible to play against, you know. Spanish want to go and play nice, pretty football. But Scotland, they, they'll allow them to some degree, but when Scotland have their opportunities, they need to give them a physical pressure. Free kick for Scotland. Once again, as you can tell, the Mexican wave has reach the fans clad in blue they're not playing ball they're bothered about what's going on on the pitch in front of us and their captain Andy Robertson hoists his right arm in the air swings a long free kick into the penalty area might drop for a Scotland player it doesn't the ball is cleared up high drops just outside the Spain penalty area McGregor then goes across and just runs it out of play couldn't quite control it by the touchline on the far side that'll be a throw into Spain on the right it's a little bit of a shame though Scotland and to be honest the free kick was really too far out wasn't it it was about 50 yards out, it was a, a long time for the Spanish to get themselves organised when the ball was played in, but those opportunities for Scotland are like gold dust, they need to ask the odd question now and again, because if they don't, eventually someone will switch off, eventually they'll lack a little bit of concentration, that's what the Spanish always play for them, that's what they're doing just now. Pat Nevin with us on Five Live and BBC Sounds, 20 minutes remaining in the first half, Scotland if they get a draw here in Seville this evening, uh, they qualify for the Euros next summer. Rodri, with his right foot, just scoops one back to Lenormand. Lenormand sees a bit of space to move into, keeps going down the right-hand side into the Scotland half, plays it to his right to Carvajal. Carvajal back to Rodri. Dykes is back there to put the pressure on. Rodri forward to Gavi, he just pings it. That pace back to Laporte. Laporte tries to thread one through to Marino, that's intercepted. What can Aaron Hickey do with the ball at his feet? He can play a very good pass, that's what he can do to release Ryan Christie on the right-hand side. Now Scotland trying to get some numbers forward. Christie sees some space on the left there for Robertson, nods it down to McGinn, who's barged over. Well, I thought he was barged over on the edge of the box. He ran into Carvajal, the referee saw it clearly, wags his finger at McGinn and says, no, get up, goal kick. Oh, that's really unusual not to get a free kick for that. Ball played into him again, he's flicked the ball away, and he's just been taken out. Carvajal would argue, there's nothing I can do, I can't get out of the way, but he is going at pace towards him again. And that free kick would have been 19 yards out, 20 yeah. yards out. That's a real surprise that Scotland didn't get that. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree, Pat. Car Carvajal will say there's nothing I can do, but the fact is he's in the way and he's blocked McGinn's but, run because no, of but, where he is. But he's not stationary. No. He's running towards yeah. the player. If you're running towards the player and don't get the ball and take him out, yeah. if you're stationary, fair enough. Uh, Andorra nil, Kosovo 1, latest in the qualifiers tonight. Still Cyprus nil, Norway nil. That is of interest to Scotland, of course. Norway need to win the last three games in the group. Tonight away to Cyprus. They host Spain on Sunday and their final game uh, away to Scotland on Sunday the 19th of November. Pass into that Scottish penalty area. Morata, I thought he might throw himself at that, just seemed to stop his run and the ball was just ahead of him and it bounces harmlessly uh, into the arms of Gunn. That was big. I have to say that was very big. Scotland were done there. I mean, a little flick ball over that, that defence and there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever, he's onside there. Mm. So if he gets a toe to it, 
I think out the Connery's eye, he can see that big lime green shirt coming towards him of Angus Gunn. And I don't think he was brave enough to go and throw himself at it, if I'm being honest. Steve Clark scribbling notes down in the technical area. If he's scribbling down, must get some orange juice. Um, he might struggle because our engineer Owain went for a walk in Seville today. The one place you think you get absolutely delicious fresh orange juice is here in Seville. And he, and he, he couldn't find it for love and the money, Pat. Yeah, well, he could have got it at breakfast this morning. Oh, that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, breakfast it was good. I think he wanted more. Ball played forward towards the halfway line. Now Scotland have it with John McGinn, 40 yards out. John McGinn thought about a pot shot, rolls it off to the right. Aaron Hickey is there for Scotland. Didn't see an option ahead of him. Comes back to Porteous. Wide it goes to Christie. Christie into midfield to McGregor. Still inside the Spain half, but Scotland keeping the ball and making Spain do a little bit of chasing for the moment. Jack Hendry, uh, 20 yards outside his own box, and Scott McTominay plays it back to Angus Gunn. Gunn floats it forward with his right foot onto the chest of Christie. Christie running across his own half, the pass is half blocked, it falls to McTominay, McTominay plays a pass back here to McKenna, and McKenna again back to Gunn who has to hurry off his line and clear, and that's controlled by Callum McGregor, McGregor fires it wide here, uh, out to Christie on the left-hand side and back it comes to Gunn again, here's Gunn to clear with his right foot, that one again goes left, Robertson jumps, it's headed down into midfield, uh, let's check in quickly at the city ground, there's been a goal, Adam Cotier. England behind here, Serbia ahead, a brilliant goal as well. Vladimir Lucic with a right foot first time shot that faded into the far right top corner. Brilliant goal, Serbia leading 1 0. Thank you, Adam. Uh, still Spain 0, Scotland 0, still Cyprus 0, Norway 0. Pat Nevin. Yeah, I think mean, Scotland really can't concentrate on that too much, but it's kind of hopeful just now. Just a moment ago, Scotland had 12, 13, 14 passes yeah. together. Never looked comfortable, did it? Mm. You, there was something about it that you didn't really believe in it. And that's very noticeable when you've not got Billy Gilmour on the field to hold that. Scotland look less comfortable than the ball. Oh, pass deflected into the path of Morata, tries to take it round. Gun the angles tight and he hits it into the side netting and then the offside flag goes up. So it wouldn't have counted according to the assistant referee. I thought there was a deflection on the way by, I have to say. Um, that's one of those ones where you're, you know, they would certainly have looked at it. Uh, he's trying, he has gone quite yeah. early, you know, when the first ball is playing. There was a deflection on, but it might have been his own player. Yeah, no, it's McGregor sticks a left foot out and, and knocks it into the path of Morata, yeah. but it's whether he was off. Before the path, and, exactly. and I think he was actually off. But once again, it's gone. There is an, an uncertainty going, coming out from the back there. You know, I, I, I don't think McKenna's necessary, or the Porters is that comfortable on the ball in comparison with some other centre-backs. And certainly Kieran Tierney, when he's doing it, but even in the midfield there, we're, we're not really that comfortable saying, yeah, we can hold the ball, we can take the sting out of the game, we can hold it up. That's something that Scotland have been able to do. But generally, when you have certainly McGregor and you have Billy and Gilmore together. Uh, Dykes has just won moments ago a decent header from a gun clearance. Christie chased it, couldn't get onto it. And so Spain have it back. And here's Balde moving at speed into Scotland territory down the left. Rodri supports him from central midfield, slides his pass across the Scotland half. Marino moves it on quickly to the right. Here's Ferran Torres, takes one touch with the ball. He's running across the face of the Scotland area, then tries to dink a little left-footed pass uh, in between the Scotland defenders. It's intercepted. McGinn slices a ball back into the left-back position. That's awkward for Andy Robertson. Gets there, takes one touch, and then just drills it high and long and over Dyke's head and into the Spain half. Do you know what happened with him again there? He's got a ball out to the left back position and just before he plays it he thinks that's too risky. So he doesn't play the ball with Haas which he was looking to play over to Robertson. He plays it miles behind him. It's much better that than taking a chance to get it intercepted. Uh, Croatia nil, Turkey won in the Wales group. Croatia and Turkey starting the night both on 10 points apiece. Croatia with a game in hand but Turkey one up a away to Croatia, Croatia away to Wales on Sunday, full commentary on Radio 5 Sports Extra England's next qualifier Tuesday night full commentary on that one uh, on 5 Live in BBC Sounds, England against Italy, John Murray, Ian Dennis, Matt Upson and Rob Green, that is also the night that Scotland go to France for the friendly in Lille, so we'll have updates uh, on that one as well and hopefully by then Scotland will be celebrating qualification for the Euros. Morata chases another ball into the Scotland penalty area. It's beyond him and Gunn stretches a big left hand out and keeps the ball in play. It's very noticeable what the Spanish favourite play is. They get the ball about 25 yards out 
and then they make a diagonal run from inside left sort of position across the box and into the area behind the centre backs. Now they may well have thought Scotland left centre back, Tierney's not there, that'll be the weakness. And they've almost got in once, but since then Scotland have went, oh, so that's what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. They just dropped back and it hasn't looked as dangerous, but you can see that as a favourite favoured Spanish move. I'm sure Scotland fans were expecting this. Norway do now lead away to Cyprus in the first half. You can tell I wasn't getting excited when you kept on telling me <laughs> well, to score I there. That. I was just saying, yeah, very good. I know, I know. <laughs> I think that's, that's what Scotland fans expected. The big test for Norway, of course, is the next game at home to Spain. Uh, a game that, that Spain will feel they, they need to win. If they can win these two games, this one against Scotland, that one against Norway, then they're qualified with two games to spare. It's not given. Norway, nope. uh, you know... Oh, Spain have played in behind Scotland here. Gabby in space on the right-hand side. Offside flag stays down on Jarthaval, shoots brilliantly blocked. Another shot driven back off the post, right across the goal line and out for a goal kick. Fabulous fit, hit on the half volley. Angus Gunn was definitely beaten. It was Marino with the strike. And, and Scotland survived. Yeah, that's what they've been playing for. That was definitely onside there. That ball down there, that channel again that they like getting into. Good tackling there from, I think it was Hickey there, had a brilliant tackle, but the ball off the post, there was no way in the world goalkeeper was getting to any deflection in their way through, would have been an own goal as well. Scotland, once again, that's two absolute clear-cut chances that Scotland have managed to get away with so far. Could it be Scotland's night? Spain nil, Scotland nil. They've given the ball away, though, Scotland inside their own half, and Spain have got the bit between their teeth towards the end of this first half. Still nil-nil, or Yarthabell's floated cross, headed away by Porteous, Balde tries to get his body in the way, stumbled, and then I think accidentally fouled Hickey. Yeah, and Scotland are going to get the free kick and a chance to uh, to clear their line. So the Ferran Torres chance in the second minute of the game, one-on-one -on -one with Gunn and he stuck it wide of the post, and then a lovely sweet hit there from Marino, uh, sliced across the ball, fizzed onto the inside of Gunn's right-hand post, and one of those packs so easily can go in off the post and went right across the line. Yeah, they really crossed it so well, and you know, they play for that. Spain have been really good tonight. Um, they've held the ball well, they've not panicked, they've not rushed it, they've not got overexcited. They just think, no, nope, keep on going, keep Ooh, on going. There was an arm this time. Dykes jumped that time with an arm. Let's see what the referee oh, decides. Hi, Merrick Laporte is down. Yellow card for Lyndon Dykes. Yellow card for Lyndon Dykes for the challenge on Laporte, aerial challenge. We saw Laporte getting a bit head up earlier after a, a, a challenge with Lyndon Dykes. We'll have another look on our monitor in a second, but Lyndon Dykes goes in the book and he's given, uh, he's given Laporte a mouthful while he's lying on the floor recovering. Yeah, I mean, the way he's gone down just now, yeah, he's, he's got his arms up, but he's above him, you know, but he's using his arms and he's saying to himself, look, I need to use my arms up. It's a classic one that centre forward, or indeed the centre back will use. The problem is if you do catch, it he, he caught his neck really more than his face. If you do catch him there, the referee's going to go for a yellow card. So I think Stevie Cloud's writing in his book just now. Che mm. Adams, second half. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Dyke's now got to be careful with any of those sort of challenges. QPR centre forward, uh, born on the Gold Coast uh, in Australia. Parents from Dumfries, which is why he's a Scotland international, winning his 33rd cap tonight and has done a sterling job. Uh, for Scotland as well, nine goals in that time, just one goal in the championship so far this season, but chosen ahead of Shea Adams tonight. Spain nil, Scotland nil, and crucially as well in this group, Norway a 1-0 up away to Cyprus. So if Scotland were to lose this game and Norway win that game, on we go uh, to the next one from Scotland's point of view. They'll have their eyes uh, on Norway, Spain on Sunday. Sliding challenge from Porteous. Stops Oyarzabal in his tracks. That had to be good, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> if he didn't get that one right, he was completely through in goal. The Hickey block as well, actually, before the shot that hit really? the post was, was good defending, wasn't it, Pat? I mean, Hickey, he's really scarcely put a foot wrong tonight. And he's been under a lot of pressure, you know, sometimes two players up against him and two very good players. But so far, he's done very, very well. Maybe the pick of the Scottish defenders. Sweaty night in Seville, five live in BBC Sounds. There's that scoop pass into the Scotland penalty area. Gavi onto it, Hendry breathing right down his neck. Gavi, the smaller man, holds him off, plays it out to the right. Cross comes in, and the ball is volleyed away on the left boot by McKenna. Gavi again gets the move rolling, but is stabbing a pass to his right. Rodri gets involved, ten yards in from the right, and 
a very measured, precise fashion. Side foots are past the Laporte. Spain quickly work it back out to the right. Carvajal's low cross. McKenna gets his body in the way. Another cross comes in. Now that's in the back of the net. Must be offside. Morata, I'm sure, was offside. Brilliant finish with his left foot. The flag is up. The goal's ruled out. VAR will check. I can't imagine how that's onside. <laughs> you really can't. But we've not seen a replay yet. We've got a great line here that's coming in. I'll tell you what, it's closer than you think the first one, but the second one, miles off. <laughs> <laughs> that won't take long to check. And it hasn't done. And it's got the Spain fans going again. It is a very sort of temperate atmosphere inside this stadium. You picked up on that very early on, but in terms of a sort of, you know, rumbustious, like, tribal football crowd, it's not that at all, is it? A absolutely not. I mean, the most annoyed that the fans have got is when they wouldn't do the, yeah. the wave <laughs> going round. And they just seemed a little bit miffed about that. But, you know, you expect something more than that when you come to a game like this. Well, mm. certainly Scotland did. Uh, but having said that, I don't think it changes the way Spain play. You know, they're holding it, they're playing it well. They're, they are slowly but surely beginning to create chances. And the problem is, when you play against that type of play, it's harder. Every minute is harder than the one before, all the way to the end. And also, Pat, the obvious, and we say this all the time, but if, if Spain do get the first goal, then Scotland have got to change, possibly chase it to find their own goal, and, you know, that opens them think, up even more. I don't more, think they it? would chase it right away. No. I think they would hold it and hold it, and maybe 10, 15 minutes from the end, you then let it loose a little bit. Uh, Lyndon Dykes is the man with the long throw. He's wrapped the match ball up in his white Scotland shirt to get all the moisture off it, get good grip. He's got a good long space to run into to launch this throw. Referee again having words with players in the six-yard box, and then he's accidentally trod on the heel of Carvajal, who wasn't best pleased about that. What can Scotland do with the throw? Dykes, now that looked like it slightly slipped to me, in towards the near post. McKenna nods it up in the air. I think that's gone behind for a goal kick. Simon caught it, yeah. Places the ball down and plays it out quickly. So Scotland have got to get back in numbers as fast as they can. Balde to Rodri. Rodri into third, fourth gear, tackled on the halfway line. Here's McGinn. McGinn tries to hold Rodri off, takes a tumble. Rodri's frustrated, wins the free kick. Another goal at the city ground. Uh, England against Serbia in the under-21s Euro qualifier. Adam Kotia. England won, Serbia won. Jaden Filigin of Hull has scored on his under-21 debut. Poor clearance went straight to him and from the edge of the box, he curled a right foot shot into the top corner. England won, Serbia won. Five minutes remaining in the first half here in Seville. Scotland have just, uh, they'll run another referee here. They've got, got, they've got a free kick at right back area. And they've asked the left back to come from the left wing to go and take it. I think he'll take a dim view of that, the referee. Yeah, just takes a little bit of time. The referee very pointedly pointing at his watch and saying you're not going to get away with that. It's the kind of thing that Rodri was a bit miffed about from Hamden. Ball forward by Hickey. Simon comes a long way. Jumps over the top of Robertson, the flag is up. I think maybe is it up for an offside as Robertson went running for the ball. Do you know what? I, I don't know what Robertson's done wrong there. I mean, the keeper comes out and takes it because he takes the ball. You know, it's okay, it's acceptable. But he stayed down there, he's holding his shoulder, mm. his right shoulder, which is a bit of a concern. And it's one of those classic ones where you always explain to people. Yeah, he's got a knee in the back as well, and he's followed through the goalkeeper. Yeah. Goalkeepers like to do that. If they get the ball, they can take everything else with them. And he took everything yeah. else. Robertson jumps. I think as, as he gets halfway through the jump, realises he, he's not going to get there because the goalkeeper's obviously got the advantage of using his arm. Turns his back and, as you say, gets a knee in the back. But then Simon's landed on him on his right shoulder and that's why Andy Robertson is down at the moment in, in some pain. So that's a worry for Scotland and a worry... For Liverpool, uh, yeah, of course. The concern being is, you know, classically he hasn't moved really. I mean, he's up, he's, he's I wouldn't say he's smiling, he's grimacing just now, but I think he's just concentrating to make sure that, you know, there's no dislocation or anything like that. But he did take a big, big hit there. I've just seen that replay of that inverted comma goal. Yes, mm -hmm. he got a touch, but <laughs> Murata saying I wasn't offside, he, yeah, right. He, he did, he did amazingly well to get anything. He got, he got the tiniest part of his studs on that just to deflect it into the bottom corner it was a, it was a very good finish but he was he was yards offside this is actually quite concerning for, yeah. for Robertson just now it really isn't moving well I mean classically Scotland would like to slow it down there's only three minutes to half time you know kill the game a little bit but kind of doesn't really look like that it looks like he's in a lot of pain Scotland can can move Hickey to left wing back 
Bring on maybe Patterson at right wing back. Yeah. Greg Taylor's another option yep. as a straight swap for Andy Robertson, but the way Robertson is walking so slowly. Yeah, I think they're going to Oh, and they've got change. yeah, they're using that shirt as a sort of temporary sling, aren't they? To keep that that right shoulder still. So that really is bad news. Scotland's captain is is coming off. He's in some pain. They're ready to make the substitution right now. Substitution about to be made. And that is Nathan Patterson who comes on. So you're right, Pat. It'll be Hickey over to left back and Everton's Nathan Patterson coming on in the right back position. Two minutes remaining in the first half. So Tierney already out injured and now Andy Robertson, two of Scotland's very best players, uh, out now of this game. Scotland just want to get themselves to half-time and keep it at nil-nil. Another goal at the City ground, Adam Cotier. And it's another Hull City player, Liam Delap, with a close-range finish after fine work from Cole Palmer down the right. So England are turning it around. They lead Serbia by two goals to one. Spain nil, Scotland nil. Nil-nil good enough tonight for Scotland to qualify for the Euros next summer because whatever happens in the rest of the group, it means that one of Spain or Norway wouldn't be able to get ahead of them. Andy Robertson now just below us, now heading for the tunnel uh, with his arm held tightly to his side, wrapped up in that white shirt. That is a very sad sight to see. Jump for the ball that was played into the penalty area, fell awkwardly, and Unai Simon, not deliberately, just, just fell on top of him, uh, which knocked his right shoulder into the ground. So, closing stages of the first half. All the, uh, the reaction, of course, in the Football Daily podcast, there for you on the BBC Sounds app. First thing uh, tomorrow morning, latest Fantasy 606 podcast out today as well. So despite the international break, FPL chatting that for you as Rodri floats a high ball to the edge of the Scotland penalty area. Clever control from Carver Howe, left-footed shot. Yeah, Callum McGregor just... down, that ball's hit him in the head. I'm surprised the referee's not stopped the game there. Then another shot comes in. I think that deflected off McGregor on the ground and Gunn picks the ball up eventually. And now the ref stops the game. It's a real surprise that they didn't stop it there because... Yes, it's the ball hitting his head, and often you think, well, it's, you know, people head the ball all the time. It was the angle, we didn't see it coming, it, and that was a painful one there. But uh, he's, got, he's up on his feet again, he doesn't want to go off. It's become very bitty, you know, it's yeah. happening in the back of the head, there's nothing he can do about that, so... He's not acting there, I can tell you that for sure. Uh, free kick then for Scotland, closing stages this first half, four minutes of added time. A couple of other pods to point you towards while we get for the game, wait for the game to get back underway. Uh, the latest Euroleagues podcast is out, and as we sit here in Seville, it's definitely worth flagging this one up. Steve Crossman and the team in conversation with Yulan Lopetegui, the recent Wolves manager. So get your ears onto that one. And Pat will be interested in this one, a new Everton pod available on the BBC Sounds app, uh, documenting the, uh, the dramatic end, well entire campaign of last season nothing will be the same it's called uh, narrated by Mark Chapman so that also available for you uh, on the BBC Sounds app Spain nil, Scotland nil. Lyndon Dykes chasing a through ball Lenormand has it covered gets there first plays it back to his goalkeeper Simon Simon side football out of the box to Laporte Laporte to Oyathabo first time ball from him played back into the heart of defence but Spain have quickly move the ball forward Norway still one up against Cyprus in fact that's a half-time scoreline so that's good news for Norway need to win their last three games in this group to have any chance of getting themselves ahead of Scotland here's Balde uh, Balde to Oyathabal they exchange another one two midway inside the Scotland half on the left Laporte gets involved again Balde one-on-one -on -one here with Patterson fresh into the action for Scotland Balde's ball Gabby attempts a little turn inside the penalty area and he's tackled and Porteous clears it and Flicked on by Dykes. Christie can't quite get to that. And Spain knock it forward into the Scotland half. And Patterson lets this run and lets it run and wants it to go all the way to the byline. Challenged by Balde. Oh, Balde got a foot on the ball. It stayed in play. Danger for Scotland. Balde then is tackled by Porteous. And that is a free kick for Balde's challenge. And Scotland will have a chance to get it clear. A little bit of a panic up for the referee because he doesn't actually know if that went out or not. So I think he wanted to give a free kick there. It was a very, very tight call. Um, you know, he's trying to see it out. And I don't think that entire ball was out. I think the, most of it was, but the entire circumference of it wasn't over the line. And uh, I think the referee's made a very good call there. Yeah, good decision. Risky by Patterson. Scotland survive. Point tonight. And they make it to the Euros next summer with two games to spare. 
An incredible achievement that is, if you think about it, the group from the start. John McGinn actually said it in his press conference last night that there was a, they were all a little bit deflated, having come out of the pot two of seeds for the first time in a long time, Scotland. They were quite deflated at how tough the draw was with Spain and Norway in there, but they've coped with it fabulously well. And they've got some more defending to do late in the first half. Morata to Gavi, wide to Carvajal, well blocked by Hickey, out for a Spain throw. It seems like a big minute for Scotland, this one, doesn't it? You know, a minute to go, the Spanish want to put and make at least one more chance before half-time. So Andy Robertson off injured, if you're just tuning in. Five Live and BBC Sound. Spain nil, Scotland nil. In sticky Seville tonight. Rodri, under pressure. Ferran Torres just gets his pass away in time. Porteous in with the challenge. Scotland defending in numbers. White shirts swarming around the edge of the Scotland penalty area. The pass is beyond Marino. Can Scotland bring it away? Hendry is tripped and fouled by Marino. Will he get booked for that? Yes, he will. Yellow card for Mikel Marino, Scotland free kick. Yeah, a silly one that for Marino, you know, I don't really know why he's doing that. They're, Scotland are breaking, but it's not in big numbers. And yeah, you could maybe say he's going for the ball, but <laughs> he's never going to get that in a month of Sunday. So for Scotland, that's a big relief. Probably just about enough to see Scotland two half time, which, you know, is what we, you know, part one, job. Yes. Of the, do of the job done, that's yeah. what we wanted to do. Really frustrate the Spanish, I think. They have frustrated yeah. to a degree, a great degree, and limited them to maybe two or three chances. Yep. Two very good ones. I, I think that Marino challenge speaks of the frustration that Spain are feeling, trying to put that pressure on late in this first half. Still nil-nil. They, of course, chasing the wins to get them to the Euros next summer. Half-time whistle blows. So, as Pat says, the first part of the job is done for Scotland tonight. Standing ovation for the visiting team from the visiting fans uh, away to our left-hand side. As Pat said as well, two really good chances. Ferran Torres, second minute of the game, one-on-one -on -one with Gunn, and he stuck it wide. And the Marino shot that fizzed uh, past Angus Gunn, hit the inside of the post, went flying across the goal line, and Scotland managed to survive that uh, as well. But so far, so good, Pat Nevin. Yeah, and Rodri will be coming off thinking, that oh, was right, they're rubbish, the way they play football. Because Scotland, to be fair, have not laid a glove. They really hadn't laid a glove on the Spanish defence. You know, a couple of balls crossed in from deep, but all the play, all the possession has been for Spain, but they haven't been able to make enough capital from it. Um, having said that, Scotland did the problem there. A glove was laid on Robertson, and even more than a glove by goalkeeper Simon, and that is a big concern, a big worry. However, Stevie Clark's made a change there, and the fact that Hickey has played so incredibly well, this is a bit of a shock for people that you know don't watch Scotland very often or listen to them. That's Hickey off. That's Kieran Tierney not available. Yeah. Not Hickey off. That's Robertson, Robertson off. off. Hickey going there. I'm still comfortable. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm fine with that. So, but it's still a, it's a big call for Scotland to last another 45 minutes. But I think there may be one or two surprises up your sleeve from Stevie Clark to come. Half time. Spain nil. Scotland nil. Well, I think, Pat, it just sums up what you've just been saying when you look at the match stats at half-time. 77% possession for Spain, as opposed to 23% for Scotland. Nine shots on target to nil. One, uh, one, uh, nine shots to nil, one shot on target to nil. Um, and uh, four corners uh, to nil as well. But, as you say, the scoreline still, needs, uh, still reads nil-nil. But when you think about Andy Robertson, when you think about Kieran Tierney, Two, two really world-class players for Scotland um, and, you know, don't know how long they're going to be out for now. How much m might that be, be well, you know, a blow in the long term? Well, you worry about it later. Mm. <laughs> You've got 45 minutes to sort everything out just now. The good thing about Scotland is that Stevie Clark, over a period of time here, has not just built a team, but he's built a backup team as well. And that backup mm. team, just, just when that injury happened, I immediately knew Hickey will move to the other side. You bring on Patterson, you'll feel quite, quite comfortable with it because they all know the system. They're all players playing at a very good level. I mean, that's two wing-backs that are playing in the Premier League. You know, you're, you're not in a panic situation here. So that's a total difference from what we'd have felt in the past as Scottish fans, you know, as Scottish supporters, that you, you lost even one good player or one of your best players. It's panic stations. It ain't like that anymore. We've got enough good players to cover us to some degree. However, you know, if we were pushing for a win here and we desperately needed a win, yeah, I may feel slightly different about it. But it, it looks OK, it looks steady. It's still, we're still second favourites for this game. Still second favourites after those figures that you gave us there. 
to get the point we need. Mm. But we're definitely not beyond the bounds of possibility. Absolutely. Look, Pat, I'm going to let you and Ali and, and John, the producer, and Owain, the engineer, go in search of a nice cool glass of orange juice, which does sound really, really nice. Um, but that's our team in Seville. We'll be back with them for second half commentary of Spain against Scotland. And we will also be inside the England camp ahead of their friendly against Australia at Wembley tomorrow. But first, the news on Five Live. Just coming up to 20 to 9, here's Richard Foster. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Thanks, Ellie. Good evening. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, says the Hamas attacks last Saturday were depravity in the worst imaginable way. He's been speaking during a visit to Israel and described seeing pictures of what had happened. Oren Marmenstein is Israel's Deputy Ambassador to the United Kingdom. What is being uh, uncovered is the atrocities that Hamas have been committing atrocities that we haven't seen even coming from ISIS. We didn't want this war, but this is the kind of terrorist organization that we are dealing with. This is ISIS on steroids, and we're trying to protect our families. The UK is going to deploy patrol and surveillance aircraft and two Royal Navy ships to the eastern Mediterranean to support Israel. Downing Street says the planes will begin flying in the region tomorrow to track threats to regional stability. Aid agencies are warning of a humanitarian crisis in Gaza, meanwhile. The Palestinian territory is under siege after those attacks, which killed 1,300 people in Israel. More than 1,400 have died in retaliatory Israeli airstrikes. Dr Mohammed Matar works at a hospital in Gaza. He's told the BBC they're running out of space. There's no beds at all. People are lying on the floor. Almost of injured people are lying on the floor. The floor is full of blood, materials and all these things, something that I never expect to see in my life. I have been here for nine years maybe in Gaza. I, I, I just watched many of the uh, escalations, wars and uh, between uh, Syria and Palestine, but this is actually disaster. It's a tragedy there. A key advisor during the pandemic has told the COVID inquiry it was clear the NHS was going to be overwhelmed by the virus. Professor Graham Medley says there was a sense that government strategy was being created on the hoof. Bernie Eccleston's been given a 17-month suspended sentence after pleading guilty to fraud. The former boss of Formula One failed to declare more than £400 million in overseas assets to HMRC. And the King has approved eight new coin designs to reflect his passion for conservation and the natural world. The Royal Mint says they'll enter circulation before the end of the year. It takes just one day to overcome your opponents. One day to fill your nation with pride. One day to become a hero. The ICC Men's Cricket World Cup 2023. Hear every ball, every boundary and every wicket. Live on the BBC. And on Sunday morning at 9.30, England face Afghanistan on 5 Sports Extra. Plus, get the TMS podcast every day throughout the tournament. Download and subscribe now. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sports with Eleanor Oldroyd. On Five Live, listen on BBC Sounds. We'll hear from Gareth Southgate in the next few minutes uh, on Five Live, but England's under-21s are also in action this evening. They're playing Serbia in a European Championship qualifier. Half-time at the city ground, Adam Cottier is there. England have a 3-1 lead here. Harvey Elliott of Liverpool scoring with a rising left foot shot just before half-time to extend England's advantage. They fell behind to Vladimir Ilic's brilliant blistering right foot shot into the top corner. A rare Serbia attack was followed by Jaden Filage and curling in an equaliser on his under-21 debut. His whole teammate Liam Delap converted across from Philogen from close range to make it 2-1 and then Harvey Elliott adding to the scoreline. England have dominated and they lead by three goals to one. Well, England's senior team face Australia tomorrow night in a friendly at Wembley. Let's bring in our football correspondent John Murray who's been watching training at the Tottenham Hotspur training ground. Evening, Evening to you, John. Hello, Alana. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, let's talk about this game tomorrow night. A friendly, theoretically, but is there such a thing between England and Australia? <laughs> Well, um, it's a very good question. I think when you think in a footballing sense of uh, England and Australia, it does take you back 20 years to the uh, to the match in 2003 when Sven Joran Eriksson famously put out a completely different side for the second half. And actually, the uh, having made 11 substitutions in that match, it effectively killed off being able to do that.
that. And uh, and that's why from almost that point onwards, there's only been a maximum of six substitutions in matches like this. But I think for England, you know, it's an important part of their preparation for the Euros, which um, England will hope the qualification for that might be clinched over the course of the next week or so. The important match is Tuesday night against Italy at Wembley. Um, so this is the precursor to that and I think the team selection for it will be interesting um, in terms of uh, keeping an eye on what happens on Tuesday night as well. But I've been speaking to Gareth Southgate who was talking about the, the rivalry between England and Australia. One of the things we've always tried to do with England is take the, the pressure out of playing, bring the enjoyment to it. But there is a reality of wearing the shirt that you've got to produce under pressure and you don't get 10 opportunities to do that uh, when, you, when you're coming into the side. So every player that's picked knows that. I knew that when I was first called up to England. You, you, you've, you've got to make it count. You've got to leave an impression with the manager. So I can't really alleviate all of that pressure for them because they've got to live with it and frankly if we want to be European champions we've all got to cope with it anyway so yes there is a need for people to produce I think what's important is that is that we get people in the areas of the pitch where they're really comfortable where they play for their clubs um, and that's what we'll make sure is right with the balance of our team for tomorrow Well that was Gareth, Gareth Southgate and he also spoke John didn't he about the, the minute silence tomorrow and that will be to remember victims of conflict in Israel and Palestine. So so what did the England manager say about that? Yes, well, there's been a, a, a growing pressure on the FA to, to actually announce what they were going to do ahead of the match at Wembley. And the announcement came today that there will be a period of silence to remember and support what they call the innocent victims of the devastating events in Israel and Palestine. Uh, there was consultation with Football Australia. The teams will wear black armbands. And uh, the FA statement said, quote, we stand for humanity and an end to the death, violence, fear and suffering. But they also said that only flags replica kits and uh, what they call other representations of nationality for the competing nations involved will be invo allowed inside Wembley. There was no mention of illuminating the Wembley arch and actually we've, we've um, there's just been a, a statement posted by Lucy Fraser who is the Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport who says and I'm quoting directly from this social media post from Lucy Fraser she says I am extremely disappointed by the FA's decision not to light up the Wembley Stadium Arch following last weekend's horrific terrorist attacks in Israel and have made my views clear to the FA. It is especially disappointing in light of the FA's bold stance on other terrorist attacks in the recent past. Words and actions matter. The government is clear. We stand with Israel. So that is a direct quote, Eleanor, from Lucy Fraser. I suspect we'll talk more about that uh, over the next 24 hours or so, John. Um, uh, uh, as far as the game itself is concerned, Jack Grealish missed the last round of interna uh, international fixtures because of injury. But he spoke to the media today. Does that imply that he will start the game? Yes, uh, it does. That's the way it works. The player who speaks on the eve of the match almost always starts the match and Gareth Southgate confirmed that he would. You can listen to the whole of that interview with Jack Grealish on the uh, Five Live Football Daily, by the way, in the morning. But I think there are a number of, of questions. Who plays in goal? Aaron Ramsdale or um, or Sam Johnston, you know, assuming that it's not Jordan Pickford. Um, there's a couple of uncapped players in this squad in the shape of Levi Colwell and Eddie Nketiah. I think the expectation will be that they will get on the field at some point. Jared Bowen as well, as well, yet to play for England at Wembley. Alexander Arnold, Jordan Henderson, Calvin Phillips, they could all be involved. And we're assuming that Harry Kane will sit this one out. I've never been like that before where you just feel so high and then at times you think, how are we ever going to like top this? Do you know what I mean? Like winning a treble, like it's been done like what once and it's not been done for 25 years or something like that. So you do half sit there sometimes and think, how are what now? Like, what do we do now? Well, I suppose that's just motivation for ourselves and, you know, you need to look at other stuff to try and motivate ourselves and, and, you know, try and win more. And I suppose that's why you look at all these brilliant players that have played over the years. That's why they're the, they're the best, because they just constantly motivate themselves. And you have still got that thing. I remember you saying it when you signed for Manchester City that the target was to start regularly in the England team. That is still there for you to absolutely crack, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. But listen, I think it's difficult because 
I think you look at the talent that we have in this England side and especially in those forward positions, those wide positions or in and around Harry, whatever you call it, the like number 10. You know, you have world-class players, like people that would walk into literally any team in the world. You know, you have the Manchester City team. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, you know, you have obviously just even Bakayo, Jude, Phil Foden, Rashford. You know, myself, Sterling. There's so many people. Um, so yeah, it's obviously will always be difficult, you know, to play regularly in them positions in in this team. But yeah, it's some of that obviously I still want to do. When you see Jude Bellingham, you know, you, you're you used to playing with, with Rodri, recognised as one of the best players, if not the best player in his position, Kevin De Bruyne. When you see, when you see Jude Bellingham and you're playing alongside him, is he a peer? Is he a, an equal to them now, you feel? Yeah, definitely. I think um, the way he's come on, especially in the last 18 months or so, has been unbelievable. Um, you know, he was still a brilliant player at Dortmund as well. But I think the way he started this season, you know, I think he's made the whole world, you know, see just how good he is. And you know, I don't want to put too much pressure on him. Uh, you know, he's only, what, 20 years old. Um, but he's got some career ahead of him, you know. If he keeps keeps playing, you know, the way he is, um, he's an unbelievable player. And I th- yeah, I think you look at him now at the moment, and you think in his position, is there anyone better in the world at the moment? Well, that was Jack Grealish talking to John Murray. John, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Helena. Um, and uh, John will be part of our commentary team, of course, tomorrow night, England against Australia from Wembley Stadium on Five Live from 7pm. Uh, the Spain players are just making their way through the tunnel on the way to the pitch in Seville. Um, Scotland, I'm sure, will be joining them very shortly. Uh, James McFadden has been watching with us tonight on Five Live Sport. Um, what did you make of that first half James, I mean, you know, Scotland didn't have a sniff at goal, but they're still nil-nil. No, it's been a it's been a tough watch. Um, we knew that Spain would come and, and try and win the game, and Scotland had to frustrate them. Um, it's been quite frustrating because Scotland have offered nothing going forward. Um, but I suppose you know, nil now at half time, you have to take it uh, and and look and say that you know Scotland should be better in the second half. It's been very very tough, but as some shift the players have put in. It really is defending like that. You just feel that Spain will get opportunities. So I think for Scotland, it's about trying to hit back now and trying to force Spain into you know defending at some point because it's too long a night to sit in for 90 minutes and, and hope the, the opposition don't score. Well, they're strolling out, looking very relaxed as if they're just heading off for some late evening tapas, the Spanish team. Uh-huh. Um, Pat Nevin and Alistair Brisbane are in Seville and hopefully that's where you'll be bound later on. Yeah, if, if, if stuff's still open, Ellie, obviously we're an hour ahead of you and there'll be a bit of stuff to do post-match. I think particularly if Scotland get the result they want uh, and qualify for the Euros next summer tonight. But I think we'll do our best. Uh, I think, am I right in saying, Pat, you've bought emergency provisions just in case there isn't anything yeah, open? Yeah, a rather lovely ball of wine known as Villa Aspilicueta. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> we'll see if it's classy and uh, robust and, uh, you know, does well and has a deep feeling to it. Right, uh, Spain are making. Done now, yeah, yeah, well, Spain are making a couple of changes at half time. Fran Garcia is coming on for Alex Balde at left back, and Brian Zaragoza is coming on to make his national team debut. And I think so excited was he at the prospect of doing that that he completely forgot he had to wait by the side of the pitch for the assistant referee uh, to put the for the fourth official to put the board up to announce him onto the stage. It's his big moment. 22 year old uh, who plays for Granada, number 10, a diminutive figure. Blonde highlights in the hair, red Spain shirt untucked. So Zaragoza comes on for Oya Thabal and change at left back. Fran Garcia on for Alex Balde. Spain nil, Scotland nil. We're in this uh, Stadio uh, de la Cartuja uh, on this island in Seville. Stadium where Colin Jackson, I look back at it, won a uh, world championship gold for Great Britain in the 110 metres hurdles here uh, back in 1999. And Celtic fans, in terms of the football, won't remember this stadium too fondly because it was here that they played that UEFA Cup final against Jose Mourinho's Porto that they eventually lost by three goals to two. It was an incredible run in that competition. I'm sure they had an incredible time in the city, uh, but the stadium, in terms of the football, uh, will not bring fond memories. In terms of Scottish football, actually, Pat, we're also in the city of Seville where David Neri scored the famous goal against Brazil in the 1982 World Cup that made them angry. And indeed, uh, Rangers played in the UEFA Cup final here. Um, yes. Very recently, which I was at. Uh, I actually can't think about that Celtic game against Porto without being seriously upset I still. Yeah. I mean, 200,000 Celtic fans there and the 
the diving and cheating yeah. for that name is one of yeah. the worst I've ever seen. Right, Spain nil, Scotland nil. Let's concentrate on this one. Scotland knowing a draw good enough to see them through to the Euros next summer. And Spain at the moment sitting on nine points in the group. Two points ahead of Norway at the start of the night, but Norway are 1-0 up away to Cyprus. So they, they need the win. They know two wins against Scotland tonight and Norway on Sunday, and they will qualify for the Euros next summer. And actually, that would help Scotland, because if they beat Norway on Sunday, Scotland will go through uh, as well. But they're going to try and sort out business on the pitch tonight, and Scotland have won an early free kick in the second half. They have had to make a change already. If you weren't listening in the first half, uh, Andy Robertson down with a shoulder injury late in the first half. Aaron Hickey's moved to left back. And Everton's Nathan Patterson is on at right back. Yeah, very noticeable. Steve Clarence actually sent them out in a very much more positive viewpoint. You're seeing Christie try and get up right beside Dykes as much as he can right in those early moments. So I think Stevie Clark feels his team's just seeding too much position. Uh, John McGinn with a free kick just inside the Spain half. Scotland all in white. Powerful header from Porteous across the face of goal. But Unai Simon saw that coming. Leaps in the air all in bright yellow. Catches it and bowls the ball out underarm to Fran Garcia, uh, the Real Madrid man, uh, who is also winning a first cap for his country uh, tonight. So that's two debutants for Spain coming on at half-time. Brian Zaragoza uh, and here Fran Garcia. Lovely skills from Garcia. And in the end, it was a desperate lunge from Nathan Patterson, but a good one uh, on the floor that took the ball off him. Played up towards Dykes. Dykes battles for it. Laporte then barges into the back of Ryan Christie. No free kick, throw to Spain. Lovely first touch from Zaragoza. I mean, when he comes on there, I have to say the changes they made. Garcia going up on the left-hand side as well. I thought Baldi played really well in the first yeah. half, so I wonder if that was an injury or they just weren't an even more attack-minded player on that left-hand side. Spain in the red shirts, gold numbers, dark blue shorts and the dark blue socks uh, with the red trim on those. Ball played into the feet of Rodri. Rodri sees Garcia in a bit of space on the left so here's the two debutants trying to link up and Zaragoza has got a real bit of zip about him dances past one challenge then another right footed drive over the crossbar that really was a bit of spark to this Spanish performance it goes behind for a Scotland goal kick very interesting that left hand side now Garcia is quick Zaragoza is lightning but he's got some tricks in there as well so that's a completely different set of questions to Scotland that are having to be answering in that left hand side there but you know, over there, you know, Patterson, probably not first choice. Obviously, Hickey's first choice there just now. He's going he's gonna to need a little bit of help there. John again, maybe be pinned back a little bit to give him some help there. Norway still one and up away to Cyprus. Ryan Christie goes chasing a, a back header from Laporte to his goalkeeper, Unai Simon. But Simon collects easily inside his own box. As Scotland have gun in goal. Porteous, Hendry, McKenna, the three centre-backs. Hickey at left wing back. Nathan Patterson on the right-hand side, McTominay and McGregor in central midfield, McGinn and Christie in support of Lyndon Dykes, who's on the yellow card. Spain on the ball, just inside the Scotland half-wide on the left, Simon in goal, uh, Danny Carvajal at right-back, Fran Garcia now on at left-back, Laporte and Lenormand, the two centre-backs, Gavi, Rodri and Mikel Marino as a midfield three, uh, Ferran Torres wide on the right, Brian Zaragoza now, uh, wide on the left and Alvaro Morata who had the ball in the back of the net in the first half the Spanish captain but it was ruled out quite correctly for offside speed again from Zaragoza and he's fouled by Hickey Hickey trying to race with him Zaragoza goes down Spain get the free kick not absolutely 100% convinced by that one when I mean, he's got the ball he's, he's got such a low centre of gravity puts the ball past him there and there's a tiniest little touch there and he's going down the Patterson's going to have to accept that that's what he's going to get. He looks like one of those players. He goes very, very Book, fast. Book Pat as well. And that's unbelievably harsh. Yeah, and that's that a problem. That is ridiculously harsh. That but is a problem up against Zaragoza now on the yellow card for Patterson. So uh, something else for Scotland to think about at the start of this second half. Five minutes into it, Spain nil, Scotland nil. Live here in the Estadio de la Cartuja on the island in Seville. I'm England. actually still furious about that yellow card. Yeah. How that's a yellow card is utterly beyond me. Spain have the free kick wide on the left. Albania 2, Czechia 0. Latest scoreline in the qualifiers uh, tonight. Zaragoza runs towards the ball, dummies it, then the free kick's whipped him. Right footed ball! In towards the far post, sliding effort from, from Lenormo. Couldn't get on the end of it. The offside flag was up anyway. Uh, so that will be Scotland's ball quality of the crosses from corners and free kicks has been absolutely fantastic um, 
Actually, Scotland held a really good line there, didn't they? There were two players offside there. That's Torres again, back with the right-footed delivery. So he ran over it initially to dummy it, then Zaragoza ran towards it, he stopped, and then Torres it's actually delivery the, it's Torres. Been her, You know, there are centre forwards who dream of getting one or two of them in a game. And he's put five or six of those crosses in that are vicious, you know, spinning towards the goalkeeper. It needs the slightest of touch from any forward and indeed any defender. Uh, Norway still 1-0 up away to Cyprus in the second half in this group. Norway knowing they have to win their last three games to have any chance of qualification. Morata's offside. Scotland won the ball, they could have played an advantage. They won't mind a bit of time being taken out of the game, though. Draw good enough for them tonight and Jack Hendry. Uh, as soon as I say that, just leaves the ball, drops it behind him and very slowly uh, walks up the pitch as Angus Gunn collects the ball for Scotland, all in green. Winning his seventh cap tonight, proud father Brian, played for Scotland as well, of course, teammate of Pats yeah. in the Scotland squad that uh, won their only ever uh, major tournament, that under-21s back in 1982 European Championship, although Brian couldn't play in the final, as we were discussing earlier today. The ball might fall for Lyndon Dykes. Dykes here to John McGinn, edge of the box to oh. Christie, and Christie falls over it as he runs into the penalty area. Not the easiest pass to control, but those chances are going to be few and far between for Scotland tonight. Best opportunity for, for Scotland, but it's, it's far from being a clear-cut one. McGinn does the right thing. He tries to play the ball into Christie, who runs into a great area, but it's pinged at his knee. There is no way he's been able to control that one. But it just shows you just a few moments there, a couple of little plays, a little bit of a one-two, and that could put, you know, if Scotland managed to get a goal, what a position oh, yeah. that would put them in just now, but that's their first real, well, half chance of the game so far. Garcia down the left to Zaragoza, Scotland were hoping for an offside flag, didn't matter, Patterson makes the tackle, clears with his right foot, Christie flicks on, Laporte is there on the halfway line and Spain start to bring the pressure uh, again, Carver Howe from right back in a more midfield role. Across to Marino, central position, 30 yards out. Zaragoza in acres of space, outside of the ball with his right foot and a slice clearance by Porteous. Goes flying past the right-hand post of Scotland's goal and behind for a corner. Yeah, he had no idea there where it was going to go. He just swung a foot at it and, you know, they're very good at it in Spanish. They're putting the ball in incredibly dangerous areas. Morata is always there. Mm. He's always there. So you have to make sure he's such a good poacher. You have to make sure you keep an eye on him all the time. Ferran Torres with the corner from the left, and it comes to that near post area, headed straight up in the air. McTominay knocked to the floor, took a knock to the face, goes down in some pain inside the Scotland penalty area, and Scotland get the free kick. Henry has to be very careful there. He, he went to do the old brandishing, the yellow card, and then he dragged his own hand away as if to say, no, I can't do that. Uh, but there's uh, a bit of anger there. I mean, it's, it's Laporte this time, isn't it? No, that's not. That's not. That's a fill, no more than that, yeah. no more than that. So free kick Scotland, uh, nine minutes gone in the second half, obviously the, uh, the time as it ticks down will get more and more important to Scotland as they close in on potential qualification this evening for the Euros next summer. If they don't get it tonight, well if Norway don't beat Spain on Sunday then they'll get it then. They've also got Georgia away next month, Thursday the 16th of November and Norway come to Hampden Park in the last group game as well. So plenty more chances for Scotland to get it done, but it is in their hands this evening, it can be done, and that's what they're fighting for. Carvajal takes the throw, throws back into his own half, Lenormand, uh, the bouncing ball, he flicks across his own half to Laporte, Laporte to Fran Garcia, two tiny little speedy figures now on the yeah. left, aren't they, Garcia and... Zaragoza. They're, they're, I mean, it's ridiculous how small they look. Yeah. They're a long way away from us, yeah. you know, but the left back and the left winger, but they are so quick and they seem to interchange effortlessly. One mm. goes behind the other and one overlaps and one underlaps. Uh, Morata in the pocket here, 40 yards out, central position to Marino. Carvajal looking for the run of Morata, cross deflected. Here is Morata, good first touch, brings it down, right footed effort, just across the face of goal and behind for a goal kick. It was a floated effort from a tight angle that was trying to bend into the top corner, but it's missed. Do you know, when you, if you played with Morata and you're a right player, it's an absolute joy. You know he's going to go to the right place every single time. You know, and if you put the ball in there, he will get on the end of it. Now, that time he couldn't quite get it on target, but his control was superb there. He was very unlucky. Another half-decent chance there. 
for the Spanish. Saw a stat on the UEFA website at half-time that said Spain has only failed to score in one of its last 41 European Championship qualifiers. That game, of course, at Hampden Park in March, and Scotland won it by two goals to nil. But the point is, they don't often draw a blank. Uh, Hickey plays back to Gunn. Gunn, the Scotland goalkeeper, has got time. Sees Porteous in front of him. Forward it goes to McTominay. McTominay takes it beyond Morata and then Patterson makes the run into space wide on the right. Still inside the Scotland half. Back to McTominay again. McTominay back into the heart of defence. Here's Jack Hendry, who's another one who's now playing his club football in Saudi Arabia after a couple of seasons in Belgium. And now plays for Al Etifak but has been an important member of this Scotland defence in this qualifying campaign. And they're saying to Spain, come and get this ball off us, that's what you need to do. And Scotland playing a bit of keep ball at the moment. Uh, Patterson's pass forward with his left foot up towards the halfway line, might fall for McGinn. Laporte gets half a tackle in. And here comes Spain with Carvajal into the midfield. And Zaragoza lays it off, wide it goes to Ferran Torres on the right-hand side. Torres... He's got Hickey backpedalling, cross into the far post beyond Morata, he was lurking again. Goes all the way across wide to the left, Zaragoza keeps it in, tries a trick and the ball rolls over the dead ball line. Goal kick for Scotland, England's under-21s playing Serbia in a Euros qualifier tonight at the City Ground. There's been another goal, Adam Kotia. England have a 4-1 lead, Noni Madweke of Chelsea scoring a super goal, probably the pick of the night, weaving his way in from the right-hand side across the edge of the box, onto his left foot, his low shot found the net, England 4, Serbia 1. Thank you, Adam. Spain nil, Scotland nil. Talking Chelsea, I know it's a long way away, but a week on Saturday, Pat, you and I, together for Chelsea-Arsenal, full commentary on yeah, Five Live, aren't very we? very interesting one to see, you know, Chelsea's recent little raise is something special. Flick on from Hickey to Christie. Christie's made good ground into the Spain penalty area, looking for the cutback, cross deflected. Spain get a body there first. It's the bearded right-back, Danny Carvajal. He's under pressure, Christie's breathing down his neck. Oh, they've taken it off him, here's Christie. Was he tripped by Carvajal? Outside the penalty area he was. Yellow card for Carvajal, free kick for Scotland down by the byline. Well done, Christie, fantastically. Chasing, chasing, chasing. There's a bit of arrogance about Carvajal there. He's got himself into a position where he's got two Scotland players on. Try a little flex and tricks and back heels. They're not that poor. No. You know, you might, your certain bank might have said, or certain midfield player might think they're rubbish, but they were better than that. Actually, we've seen that again then. He should have done the back flight, but it was a soft free kick, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. There wasn't a lot in that, and uh, Carvajal now in the book. And uh, this is probably the best position yeah. from a free kick that Scotland have managed to get in the game. Hickey's wanting to play to himself right on the edge of the area there. He feels he's free to get the ball. Yeah. Now McTominay is not in the penalty area. The, the, the man who's been scoring all the goals for Scotland in this group, he's going to take this free kick just outside the penalty area, three yards up from the touchline, six white shirts in the middle, whips it in, oh, oh, it's into the back of the net! Scott McTominay does it again for Scotland, and they're on the verge of something very, very special in Seville tonight. Are they going to beat Spain at home? A first qualifying defeat for Spain, potentially, in 20 years. They've been under pressure for an hour in this game, but Scott McTominay has whipped the free kick beyond Unai Simon, and Scott The Scotland fans have been very, very quiet up until now. But that ball played in. I've been talking to the quality of Torres' free kick for the opposition for Spain. That was vicious. It was wet. Goalkeeper absolutely nowhere. Don't know what he's complaining about. Actually, he is complaining that he was being barred by Henry and he couldn't actually go and attack it. He's gone out and he said a word with the referee twice now. The referee is now yellow carded him for doing that. He won't leave the referee alone. I just want this game to start again. I want this goal to be given. I want us to make oh. sure. And I think he's looking at it again. Oh, hang on. And I think Henry will be penalised. Right. Referee is on his way to the monitor. And Scotland's moment of joy, moment of glory may be about to be snatched away. The images we've got on our monitor are just of our referee standing there with his hand to his ear, McTominay takes the free kick, Jack Hendry, as Pat was describing, is in the six-yard box in front of Unai Simon, standing behind the Spanish defender. Well. It doesn't do much he to Simon. He really doesn't do much. 
He touches the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper makes no attempt to go for the ball. No. But then if he is standing in an offside position when the ball is played, he is interfering with the goalkeeper. Referee is on his way back to the pitch. What's he going to decide? Here he comes. Referee comes jogging onto the pitch here in Seville. He's changed his mind. Free kick to Spain for the challenge on Unai Simon. Barely anything from Jack Hendry that. Simon didn't really make an attempt to jump to the ball. Had he done so, then Hendry might have had to have fouled him. And Scott McTominay's fabulous strike is taken away. Now, if Spain, uh, Scotland get a point tonight, they are still going to qualify for the Euros. The goal, obviously, would have put them in a much stronger position. That's a painful one to take. And you know, this is when VAR should be telling the crowd what happened. Was it the free, was it the foul? Was it the fact he was offside and then having an effect on the goalkeeper who done nothing? And I think it's the foul on the well, yeah, it seems you're to right. Happen. It's just come up on the screen, but on our screen, but not on the screens here inside the stadium. Uh, even so, it's not that clear. Look, you know, I, I think it's, a, it's the softest of soft free kicks, he's not doing a hell of a lot. But then the goalkeeper can't get out, and because he stopped him and he's blocked him and he's touched him, I understand why he's done, but it's painful. Spain attacking down the right, so Spain nil, Scotland nil. Ferran Torres tries to get across in, Hickey's there in blocks, and it goes behind. I mean, Simon took a risk by not going for it and just accepting that he was going to get the free kick. Had he made more of an effort, Hendry might have had to put more force to stop him, or he might have got to the ball. There was so much, but the thing about Hendry is, he is in an offside position, maybe. Yeah. His toe looks to me to be offside, so he, offside on that feeling. Zaragoza's cross into the Scotland penalty area, might drop here for Gabby. The ball goes bobbling past the right-hand post. Morata, Morata again, classic centre-forward, just lurking around the area. Wasn't far away from getting onto that one as well, and suddenly we got a bit of drama in Seville. Spain nil, Scotland nil. And the funny thing was, Pat, on the comments of the free kick, I was, I was thinking to myself, McTominay's the goal scorer normally and so good at sort of picking up on those things. Why is he taking that? Who's yeah. he looking for in the middle? <laughs> what I didn't realise was he was just going to whip it into the top corner. I mean, I mean yeah, but let's not forget what a brilliant whipped ball yeah. into that top corner from an incredibly acute angle. That may well spook, you know, it may well lift the Spaniards who now know that they have to really get this going and they need to get three points and they're in danger. But it also may slightly spook them. Scotland are dangerous yeah. on the break. Norway 2 0 up away to Cyprus. This is still Spain 0, Scotland 0. Next break in play will take you back to the city ground. England's under 21s comfortable against Serbia this evening. Cross comes into the Scotland box. Angus Gunn is able to catch it and fall upon the ball gratefully inside his own box. Back to the city ground, Adam. Yeah, very comfortable indeed for England. They have a 5 1 lead now. Noni Madweke with another goal. The Chelsea man with a left foot shot low into the corner after a neat touch from Rico Lewis. England's under 21. Spain's five, Serbia one. Spain nil, Scotland nil. Back pass here comes to Unai Simon, who consider himself, who can consider himself a little fortunate, I think, that Scotland's goal didn't count. A little bit like the one actually that uh, the Patterson got the yellow card for. It was an arm out and it was a touch, but it. But there's so much, little it? in it. You know, and, so little. And in actually, it. Pat, when you watch any cross into a box at this level of football, there's always that sort of pushing and shoving yeah, between there's, defenders there's and the goal with it, I know, I know, goal I know. Goal. Nil-nil, Carvajal's ball into the edge of the box, got to be careful with Gavi on the ball there, flick from Torres to Gavi, Gavi's cross to the far post over the head of Zanagotha who threw himself at it but it's run to Fran Garcia on the left, his cross is swinging deep to the back post, clears everyone, Gavi is there, chests it down, the ball spins to a stop at his feet, there's Carvajal, Carvajal back to the edge of the penalty area, they work Gavi into space again, cross blocked by Hickey, comes straight back to Gavi, now the ball comes in, headed away, by Lyndon Dykes all the way back there for Scotland. Brown again from the defence. <laughs> I think he's having some game, Hickey. Just gets his body in the way time and time again. I think he's playing with an injury just now. But Scotland cannot afford to lose another full-back stroke wing-back. No, he's uh, lost Andy Robertson to injury in the first half. Shoulder injury. Cross comes in again to that Scotland penalty area beyond everyone from Zaragoza. And behind it goes for a goal kick to Scotland. So 25 minutes, 25 minutes plus added time. And it's still nil-nil. That's all that's remaining in the game. Steve Clark still down on the uh, on the touchline. There takes a big swig of water. I can imagine he's thirsty. I'm certainly thirsty. 
plenty of fans taking on the refreshment at half time inside this boiling hot stadium. And here's Scott McTominay on the ball for Scotland inside his own half. Out it goes to Nathan Patterson on the right. Zaragoza in front of him. Patterson forced backward, twisting and turning away from him. Then a loose pass into midfield, intercepted by Marino. Marino has Rodri in front of him, a couple of yards away to his left, gives it to him, and then Rodri again takes control from the base of midfield. Tickles a pass towards Marino. Marino goes wide to Zaragoza. Fran Garcia makes the overlap on the outside. Cross comes in, and Murat is underneath it, but too far underneath it. Heads it over the bar and then goes down, holding his face as if he's been caught. Jack Hendry leans over him to have a word. Murata reacts angrily. Angus Gunn steps in between them, and it's just starting to heat up a little bit and I mean in terms of the sort of atmosphere between the players rather than the ambient temperature inside the stadium Scotland take that all day long absolutely all day long because you know they, they can see, you can see their frustration happening there they absolutely want that to be the case a couple of changes being made for Spain Jesus Navas is coming on Oihan Santhet is also coming on for Miguel Marino there's been another goal in the game between England's under 21s and Serbia in the city ground Adam Cotia and a second goal of the night for the under 21 debutant Jaden Filigen of Hull tapping in after being set up by his whole city teammate Liam de Lapp. England 6 Serbia 1 Cyprus nil, Norway 3 so Norway are going to get their win uh, this evening I don't think Scotland fans will be too surprised about that this one though is the crucial one uh, this one is still nil nil and we're into the last 20 minutes or so of the game free kicks gone against Scotland inside the centre circle mock uh, theatrical uh, disgust from Scott McTominay mouth wide open both hands on top of head as if saying well how on earth can that be given Jesus Navas plays his football in this city on the ball for Spain cut back from the other substitute goes behind for a Spanish corner that came off Jack Hendry who seems to be involved in everything at the moment that's Oihan Sanfet uh, with the cross wearing the number two uh, for Spain yes come on from Marino obviously and uh, the Carvajal going off obviously on a yellow card just now I understand why they do that but uh, the man they brought on is not slow is he Navas Sanfet is a third Spanish debutant in this game three of them have come that's on in the second call. half that's that's a huge call it is a huge call uh, Ferran Torres with the corner from the right headed away bouncing ball Navas is there first for Spain forward it goes down the left and another cross comes into that Scottish penalty area Zaragoza's up early didn't time the jump well he jumped with Patterson neither of the players made contact and it goes behind for a goal kick I was just checking on the goal scorers for Cyprus Norway as you do Pat Sorlot's got the first Haaland's got the next two. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a shock in any way whatsoever. It's not. Do you know, the odd, the odd thing since these changes have been made, yeah, the pace that they were, the, the Spaniards brought on in the left-hand side, you think, oh, you know, Zaragoza quite, started quite so did Garcia. I'm not sure these changes have strengthened the Spanish in any way. Um, still holding the ball quite well. Scotland seems to be growing, to my mind, into this game mm. a little bit more. Without you... dominating it, of course, just growing into it a little bit more, but maybe that's what the Spanish would like, just to drive Scotland out a little bit so they can play in the break. And you made the point as well at half-time off-air, Pat, and it's a very, you know, very, very high standard to compare them to, but, you know, we used to watch Spanish teams, the great Spanish teams, you know, that were winning Euros and winning World Cups. They're a pale imitation, this team, aren't no, they? No, they're, they're nowhere near that team, but that team was, you know, the very few who get close yeah. to that team. Still a very good side, though, but at the moment, Scotland have had a 10-15 minute period, but there's not been that many chances created. Um, but you know it only takes one chance and Scotland will have to really totally adapt their game change everything the thing is they're capable of doing yeah. it Five Live in BBC Sounds live in Seville just over 20 minutes to play could be uh, some some real Scottish scenes of celebration inside this stadium and inside this city if Scotland can hold on and get the point or even get themselves a win tonight win tonight they not only win the game they win the group as well ahead of Spain what an achievement that would be his Jesus Navas on the ball for Spain inside the Scotland half. We've got full commentary of England, Australia, the friendly at Wembley tomorrow night, kicks off at 7.45. And then Rugby World Cup quarterfinals all the way on Five Live Sport on Saturday uh, and Sunday, starting with Wales, Argentina, 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. We've also got commentary of Super League Grand Final, 6 o'clock on Saturday night. That's the Wigan Warriors against the Catalan Dragons. Here's Navas. Navas is curling ball, Rodri ducks underneath it, Imeric Laporte, 45 yards out, 
sort of dummied as if he was going to shoot from way out, plays it to the left, Garcia's cross comes in, Porteous leaps, flicks his legs in the air as he heads the ball away, falls to Rodri on the edge of the box, tries to play the 1-2 with Morata, Scotland get bodies in the way again and Spain come again. 20 minutes to play, Spain oh. nil, Scotland nil, Navas caught by Ryan Christie, but Spain get away, Torres with pace, cross comes in low into the penalty area and again... Scotland have someone in the right place at the right time. McTominay hoofs it away, throwing to Spain. I thought Christie would get a yellow card for that. He's, he's had a few lunges tonight, hasn't he? Yeah, he's he's always, he seems really quite frustrated about it. And he wants to get on the ball and he wants to play football. But he's basically just had to chase. Ferran Torres down by the byline, whips that cross in, deep to the far post, headed away. Lyndon Dyke's second header only finds Rodri. Scotland cannot get out at the moment. I'm Eric Laporte. Again, looks as if he's going to hit a shot from range. Again, slides the pass to the left, but this time overhits it and it goes beyond Zaragoza and goes out for a throw into Scotland in the right back position. What Scotland could really do with this now, those players at the back, they're under pressure this entire game. They've chased, they've concentrated, they've tackled, they've thrown their bodies in the way. They haven't had any respite whatsoever. You just think, is it time to bring on Shea Adams? If you bring Shea Adams on, he makes intelligent runs in. OK, he's not got the physical attributes that Dykes has got, but he runs into corners and he holds the ball in a better technical way. And I must admit, Stevie Clark, I think he's, it would be, wouldn't be a bad idea to bring on Chad Adams now. Pat could shout down to his mate from up on high. I'm texting him. <laughs> Free kick for Scotland. John McGinn doing John McGinn things there. Throw in to him, just put his, his body in the way and said to Fran Garcic, come, come and try and get this ball from from behind me, absolutely no chance of doing that, fouled him, so free kick for Scotland, you can hear the Scottish fans singing loud and proud, flick on from Dykes, nearly found Christie, Simon off his line, falls on the ball, the Spanish goalkeeper, countdown continues into the last 18 minutes of the 90, Spain nil, Scotland nil, and Scotland with the ball, in the net in this second half, by the boot of Scott McTominay, but ruled out for a Jack Hendry push on the goalkeeper, Simon, but it was an incredible finish from tight down by the byline, took Simon by surprise and it was perfectly hit and arrowed into the top corner. Scotland with defending to do again here, Ferran Torres lays the ball off to Navas, Navas dummies across, zips to his right, oh good ball and headed in! Alvaro Morata times his run beautifully, Spain are ahead and maybe Scotland won't be qualifying for the Euros tonight, it might have to wait until the weekend, it might have to wait until keeps on getting there, doesn't he? He keeps on going into the right areas. And once again, he makes a deep run. Scotland just turned off for a second there. And he's guided a beautiful thing to the back post. And Stevie Clark now, he's got some decisions to make. 34th international goal for the Spanish captain tonight, Alvaro Morata, and we've seen him score plenty of those. Navas just, just delayed the cross slightly. Morata saw exactly what was happening, miles onside, and perfect touch on the ball as well. Gave Gunn absolutely no chance. Spain won, Scotland nil. Group table as it stands then, Scotland on 15 points, Spain would move up to 12, Norway comfortable tonight, 4-0 away to Cyprus, they would be on 10 points. But again, remember, it is Norway against Spain on Sunday, and if Norway don't win that game, and Spain have everything to play for in it, then Scotland will qualify without kicking another ball in this group. I'm still not writing this one off. Absolutely no. not writing this one off because I mean, Scotland have, have had a game plan. And the game plan was try to see it out for a nil now. OK, they got quite close, 15 minutes to go-ish. However, this game, game plan B has to come into effect now. And I think Scotland have got something to offer now. I wonder if he will go to a back four. Who will he bring on? I mean, quite clearly, Che Adams will have to come on. But who else on top of that? to try and get some control in that midfield and, you know, Scotland, have, you know, what have you got to lose? You might as well have a dick at it, have a go at it. Ryan Christie bumped off the ball as it was cleared upfield towards him. Laporte protests his innocence, referee's not buying it, free kick for Scotland. Scotland still have time to get the equaliser, 15 minutes to play, the equaliser will do, a point will take them to the Euros next summer. The danger for Scotland, dare I voice it, were Norway to beat Spain at the weekend, 
and then Scotland draw away to Georgia, that would make them vulnerable to Norway in the final game at Hampden yeah. Park. Now, Scotland could easily beat Norway at Hampden Park and it wouldn't matter. Draw against Norway would be good enough as well, but it would then go down to the head-to-head. -head. Do you remember that before the game, I wouldn't be lose. drawing into this is yeah. all over? Yeah. That's why. OK. <laughs> Free kick for Scotland. Can they find the equaliser? McGinn floats it across to the left-hand side of the penalty area. Cleared high up in the air. Navas chases, tries to keep the ball in play. Callum McGregor pokes it back towards Patterson. Zanagoffa going 100 miles an hour to try and close down Angus Gunn. Gunn takes his time, floats it with his left foot, looking for the leap of Christie wide on the left-hand side. And Gavi's chip over the top of Callum McGregor's head. Didn't see him collect the ball the other side of McGregor and Scotland eventually have a throw on the left. I remember the, the changes Stevie Clark has often made at the end of games. In the Norway game, it was incredible, the difference that was made by those changes. By the way, they're seeing another line, and it was the offside they're now calling for the goal that Scotland didn't right. get which is what I thought initially, the foot was offside, hence you are now, you can infringe on it. Yeah. Because you're, you're not doing anything except... Go you, uh, the goalkeeper can't come out because he's got an offside player in you're front a, of him. You're affecting the play. So I understand that. That's yeah. how I saw it at first, and I, I actually think that's right. OK. That's why the goal didn't stand. Uh, the lines were drawn. Jack Hendry was offside, uh, affecting play in front of Unai Simon. And that is why Spain now leads Scotland by a goal to nil. But still time for Scotland to try and find the equaliser. They've got to try and snuff out the danger of Brian Zaragoff, who's buzzing around again, wide on the left. Ball played out at the back by McTominay, but only as far as Gavi. Uh, Gavi gets it again from Garcia. Slides a pass into midfield, very smooth and slick from the team in red. And here's Jesus Navas, double change coming for Scotland shortly. Stuart Armstrong and Shea Adams will be thrown into the action by Steve Clark. Ole's from the Spanish fans now as every pass is completed. Well, you see, they could be on shortly. The ball has to go <laughs> out. <laughs> they a wee while because, you know, Spaniards are loving, they're going to try and run this down. And what would be the nightmare for a substitute coming on? I've been here before myself. You're desperate to go on, but see if a goal scored mm. before you get on, the mm. chance to make the big difference. So... You know, those two players will be desperate. Oh, that's a great turn from Zaragoza to get away from Porteous and a brilliant covering challenge from Jack Hendry, who saw the danger from a mile off, came hurtling across, sliding in and won the ball, because had he not done that, Zaragoza was away. Yeah, but that's why you have three centre-backs. Uh, <laughs> so you get a covering right wing-back and he managed to do that. Timed it well. He's actually had a good game tonight, hasn't he? A very, very yeah. good game. Right, here come the changes. Uh, Lyndon Dykes off, Shea Adams on. 12 minutes of the 90 remaining. Five live in BBC Sounds, live in the Estadio de la Cartuja uh, here in Seville. And Scotland, a goal behind. Need to try and find a goal from somewhere to level this up to qualify for the Euros tonight. Ryan Christie comes off, so Stuart Armstrong comes on as the fresh pair of legs to do that running in support of uh, Shea Adams and in that Scotland midfield. And that's so important at this point in the game. You've got... 12 minutes something like that left just now a little bit of extra time on top of that injury time on top of that but you need the energy to try and get up get a little bit of support to Shea Adams who will as I speak hold the ball up better and has done so immediately McGinn's ball over the top is looking for McTominay Simon comes a long way off his line but made the right decision gets there first Spain will of course play out and do it well Rodri draws in Armstrong and then rolls it to Gavi and Gavi sees Navas speeding up the right hand side he lays it off to, uh, to Ferran Torres. Plays the 1 2 with Navas, and back they come down the right. 37 years old now, Jesus Navas, who internationally has won everything you can win because, of course, he was a member of the World Cup winning squad, Euro 2012 as well. Cross comes in to the Scottish penalty area and a member uh, of the squad this summer that won the Nations League in June. Scotland have won it back inside their own half. Shea Adams and uh, Armstrong combined, now Hickey on the floor trying to win a ball. And Rodri stands over him. Hickey's reacting as if he's been trodden on. The referee eventually blows his whistle and gives a free kick to Scotland and Ro Rodri just shrugs and walks away. Yeah, um, well, it's, it's hard to see because such a tangle of legs down there. I think he knew exactly what he was doing. He's trying to make sure that... And Rodri's had a good, good old kick at his shin there. <laughs> and the referee spotted that right away. <laughs> 
he saw the opportunity and he, he wasn't yeah. going to pass that up. Absolutely. Uh, England, Australia, uh, tomorrow night, full commentary uh, with John Murray and Stephen Warnock. Game kicks off at 7.45. That's a friendly at Wembley. Wales, Croatia, Sunday, 7.45 kickoff. Commentary on Radio 5 Sports Extra. And here comes Scotland, down the left. Chance for Hickey to run at the Spanish defence. Dummies the shot with the left foot, works it onto his right foot, in the box, hits the shot, oh, takes a touch on the way through. It came off Adam's boot, I think, and Simon saved it almost accidentally. He was throwing himself down for the Hickey shot, and the ball just hits him in the stomach, and he grabs it. There wasn't enough pace on it there, and Hickey's come in. He's done such a shift there. He's running out of legs when he goes in there. Doesn't get a lot on it. But that ricochet could have gone anywhere, absolutely anywhere. And this is what Stevie Clark's playing for. Well done, Che Adams. He gets a foot out there. He does redirect it. But sadly for Scotland, straight to goalkeeper Simo. Spain 1, Scotland 0, Cyprus 0, Norway 4. Keeps it alive in terms of the top two places in this group. Things looking a bit brighter for Scotland. Shea Adams shrugs off Gabby. Support on the right-hand side. Here's John McGinn into the Spanish penalty area. Two to aim out in the box. Cross is blocked. Corner for Scotland. And that's why I say to you, I don't write this one off. Because you've had plan A and now plan B. Scotland feel co very comfortable with this. They're really happy to go out and have a dig at teams and have a go at teams. They've brought some fresh legs on here as well. That could make a difference. And if you can beat 1-0 or 2-0, does it really matter greatly? No, it won't at all in, in this group. Corner for Scotland then. What can they conjure up? McGinn's delivery with the left foot swirling into the near post. Simon has a punch at that and it's cleared. And Zaragoza comes chasing. But Patterson is there first, fires the ball to McGinn. Patterson continues the run down by the byline. Cross is blocked again. This time it spins out for a throw-in to Scotland. Into the last 10 minutes of this European Championship qualifier. Maratta's goal, the difference between the two teams at the moment. But Scotland giving it a right go in the closing stages, trailing by a goal to nil. And as you would expect, Maratta is the plan to do that. Um, of course, Scotland's long throw expert is not on the pitch at the moment, so they've had to change that up a bit for Porteous now. Porteous. The Watford defender, just told to wait, change of ball in fact. A dry one with a bit of luck. And he's going to take a long run towards the touchline, aiming at those white shirts in the middle, looking for the flick on Mike Ford. Armstrong shot flicked up over the bar, brilliantly tackled. I think it's Rodri, is it Rodri who's got his body in the way? It is, who's Spain's hero there. Armstrong looking to get the snapshot away and Rodri was there just in time, which meant he couldn't get the contact to keep it down. Uh, well, what a difference, you know, the plan B, Go for it, put a little bit of pressure. Now, you may get done on the break, however, it's got to put him under pressure. Another throw in from Porteous in towards the near post. Simon really flaps at that. Oh, Porteous heads it back, trying to head it back across goal, gets it slightly wrong, angles it to the left, and it goes behind for a goal kick. But that last five minutes, very encouraging. Yellow car goes up for someone. Well, I'm trying to see who it was, maybe Scotland 13, Port, uh, yeah, Hendry, spot, maybe. Pat. Maybe Jack Hendry. Hendry, yeah. Jack Hendry gets the yellow card. I'm entirely sure what for, something said, perhaps, I don't know. Another Spanish change being made here, goal scorer Morata comes on. Hosselu comes on, formerly of Stoke and Newcastle, has made a uh, belated, successful entry onto the international stage. Four goals in six caps for Spain so far, two goals on his debut against Norway in this group, and the winner against Italy in the Nations League semi-final this summer. So, Hosselu having an impact now of Real Madrid, uh, on loan from Espanyol, who were relegated with Hosselu playing for them last season, but he did manage 16 goals in that team. So, he's on up front, header flipped on, Ferran Torres first time cross, might run to Hosselu here, he's round the goalkeeper, can he finish? Oh, brilliantly blocked. Is that Hendry there again? Yeah, bit of a confusion. To be honest, he's got there back, I think it's Porteous that gets back there. Um, to be fair, he's made the wrong decision. He's got to clear that. He leaves it to the goalkeeper. That's not what you do when you're not sure. You get it out of play. Scotland very, very lucky again, but you've got to take chances. That's what's going to happen in these last few minutes. Porteous with the block. Saves Scotland 2-0, and it's done. Six minutes to play at 1-0. Scotland still have a chance of getting the point they need for qualification tonight for the Euros uh, next summer. And again, just looking across the stadium at those loyal horse now scotland fans most of them decked out in the dark blue replica shirts plenty of them in kilts this evening as well and they will be a fantastic addition to euro 2024 next summer but scotland still got a bit of work to get there potentially unless of course norway don't beat spain in oslo on sunday spain won scotland nil 
Colin Murray taking over at 10 o'clock this evening on BBC Radio 5 Live. Here's Jesus Navas. It was his cross that created the goal for Morata. His pass down the right. Oh, Hickey slipped. Disaster for Scotland. Hosselu plays it across goal and it's gone in as an own goal. Spain are going to win the game tonight. Poor old Aaron Hickey who's had a fabulous game. Slipped in the left back position. The cross was rolled across the face of goal. Scotland defenders desperately diving in to try and prevent the inevitable. And in the end, it's gone in off Ryan Porteous. And Scotland will be beaten tonight. Spain 2, Scotland 0. Scotland aren't qualifying for the Euros in Seville this evening. Oh, it's such a shame for him. As you say, he's played so well tonight. And he's hammered up and down that line. He's played three positions. And that tiredness has come on to roost. He's got the ball, he's running into an area. He's not even under a huge amount of pressure. He's turned to be coming the ball, and it's just a slip. There's no pressure there whatsoever. It can happen, and I think it's come off poor S, and it's, it's such a shame. You know, I feel sorry for any player. Anyone can slip in that situation. That will haunt him for a while. Late changes for Scotland. Too late, you think. Billy Gilmore comes on in central midfield. Porteous uh, comes off, and the other change sees... Callum McGregor coming off and Kenny McLean coming on. Three and a half minutes to play of the 90. Spain 2, Scotland 0. Had Jack Hendry been a couple of centimetres further back for the McTominay goal, had that stood, you never know, you never know tonight. But Scotland still have their chances. If Norway don't beat Spain in Oslo on Sunday, then Scotland will qualify. And Scotland have games away to Georgia and at home to Norway next month to get the job done themselves. Yeah, and uh, there's a little bit of a downer for Scotland because with the last, uh, you know, those last five minutes, last hurrah, change it, you know, ask a lot of different questions, maybe go to a back four, all those sort of things that Stevie Clark's done and done well and work in places like Norway. But that one slip has just killed off. Ball played back to Angus Gunn by Hickey. Gunn side foots it away with his right foot. Norway have won tonight by four goals to nil. They move to 10 points. Spain will be on 12 points. Scotland on 15 points. If you're a Scotland fan, all eyes turn to Oslo Sunday night. Norway against Spain. Norway have to win the game to have any chance of qualification. If they don't win the game, then Scotland will qualify for the Euros with two games to spare. That's how it stands. It's kind of hard for Scotland just now. The fans have stuck with them a long way. But then they, they have been outplayed. You have to accept that. They, yeah. they have been outplayed the whole game. But that, that was accepted before the game started. Well, at the moment they're on our screen, they're giving the goal to Sanfet. I'm sure it came off Porteous as he went sliding in. I'm one of those people who doesn't mind that. No, I know, <laughs> exactly. Don't, don't give it to the defender if you can. It looked like it came off Porteous's boot. I'm sure Oihan Sanfet will take it on his debut, having come off the bench for Spain. But the bottom line is... Spain are going to win the game, and Spain also know if they beat Norway on Sunday, they qualify for the Euros. That, in turn, would see Scotland qualify for the Euros as well. So the entire top two in the group could be done and dusted Sunday evening. We'll keep you across it on Five Live and BBC Sounds during all that World Cup rugby commentary that's on the way over Saturday, Sunday. Wales, Argentina at four. Uh, on Saturday, Ireland, New Zealand at 8, England, Fiji on Sunday at 4 o'clock, France, South Africa at 8. And if you want to have your appetite whetted for those, uh, the Rugby Union Daily Podcast is the place to head via the BBC Sounds app. Football Daily for all the reaction to this one tomorrow. Zaragoza, brilliant run into the Scotland penalty, tries to cut back, intercepted by McKenna at the near post for Scotland, who then rolls the pass to Patterson, and 3-0 would be very harsh on Scotland were they to lose it that way. Boos and jeers inside the stadium because they've started the Mexican wave up again and the Scotland fans aren't joining in. Surprise, surprise, McTominay's now fouled. Scotland get themselves a free kick just inside the Spain half. Another cynical one there, definite yellow card, no complaints. Well, not too many complaints. But they just want to kill this game off, understandably. And uh, I think Laporte is delighted to be able to go and leave a little bit on McTominay there. That's the second time he's done that precise play. He should have been booked for the first one. But at the moment, I mean, I mean that's just a wipeout. Yep. That's, that's an American football wipeout. And he has got the gall to complain to the assistant referee. He is looking... Really quite red-faced, I Merrick Laporte, and I know I would look extremely red-faced if I was running around in that heat, but uh, 
Pat was out there today, pounding the streets of Seville. So was our producer, John Southall. yeah, John Southall, producer John. They went on separate runs today together. Nodded down into the box. Oh, stretching effort from Adams just wide of the left-hand post, and he wants to call. He's got penalty. Penalty. He's going to get penalty. penalty. Maybe. Is he? No, Is goal that? kick. Goal, goal kick. kick. I thought he was pointing at the spot. Sorry, Scotland. Fans. No, just for a second. I agreed with you. The way he ran with his, he was pointing downwards, and he's yeah. saying there is a free kick against Scotland. But it's not an offside, is it? Adam stretches, pokes the ball wide. I'm not sure I understand that, Phil. Or is he just giving a goal kick? I am. Adam stretches, gets a toe on the ball. It's heading for the far corner. Wasn't him a huge amount. Yeah. No, Simon doesn't touch it. So maybe he was just pointed for the goal kick. Scotland thought they had a claim for a penalty because Adams is sort of knocked off balance by Laporte. And the referee did run in and seemed to be pointing to the spot. McGinn hoofs it forward quickly. We're into five minutes of added time. That's now down to four minutes for Scotland to try and find themselves two goals. And Scotland, of course, big test for them on Tuesday night. Be interesting to see what team Steve Clark picks for that one, actually. Away to France in Lille on Tuesday. We'll have updates on that one. Commentary next Tuesday night in terms of football is England-Italy. European Championship qualifier should be a good one. England's under-21s have been banging in the goals tonight. Adam Cotty has been watching at the city ground. And they have a seventh, so 7-1, seven and Lee Carsley on the verge of his biggest win as the under-21 boss. The latest and own goal after good work from Jamie Byro Gittins of uh, Borussia Dortmund. Terrific performance from England. They lead 7-1 here tonight. Uh, three minutes remaining here in Seville. Spain now comfortable. Morata's header. And the second goal, which seems to have been given to Oihan Sanfet, that I thought was an own goal, but that was Spain's second. That has killed the game. Spain now playing keep ball inside their own half. Navas plays it back to Le Normand. He clears upfield. Hosselu felt he was being fouled. Ball bounces down on the halfway line. Ferran Torres controls, holds off Hickey. It's played back to Sanfet. Right-footed pass from him between the two centre-backs, but back it comes to Unai Simon, the goalkeeper. Yeah, it's one of those ones, Scotland players, you're thinking now, don't get any more bookings, you know, don't get anyone that we will lose for next games. We're already losing a couple of players and possibly Robertson and yeah. now Tierney. You know, and that's something you have to take, you know, keep in mind that you don't want anyone else, you know, A, getting booked, getting suspended or worrying about suspension for the last couple of games. Uh, ball is played back here for Spain to Laporte, one of those on a yellow card for Spain this evening they are just running the game down players all absolutely drenched in sweat down there been hard work this evening Spain have done what what they need to do but if Norway can beat them on Sunday then Scotland will go to Georgia knowing that a point might not be enough for them might have to be a win away to Georgia but let's wait and see what happens uh, on Sunday here's Navas controls the ball beautifully from the diagonal play to him, turns away from Armstrong. Home fans enjoyed that. Back to the norm on it goes. Rodri drops in between the centre backs. Casually chips a pass with his right foot. Navas involved again, wide on the right. And Spain just stroking it around very comfortably at the moment as the hand clap starts around the Estadio de la Cartuja. It's very painful for the Scotland players, you know, the, the amount of work that they put in there. They knew, what the, they knew what the game plan was, and it was working fairly well. In fact, it was working very well. OK, if you do lose a goal, it's OK, that's part of the plan. But you know you're going to go and push it and chase it and ask different questions near the end. You feel a wee bit cheated not to have mm. got that, because I think it would have been really exciting, but just that one slip at that one moment, and, you know, you've, you've kept the number of players like such as Shea Adams in reserve, hoping that you can do that in, in the last few moments. And I understand the plan. It's not worked, but there's plenty of teams that come here and the plans don't work. One minute to play. Cross comes in from the left for Spain. Hosselu was threatening around the penalty spot. Scotland have cleared. Here's Patterson in the right-back position, being chased by Fran Garcia. Billy Gilmore on the ball, plays back to Gunn inside his six-yard box. Cheeky little pass, that one. That's the thing. You look at the way Scotland hold the ball so much better when Billy Gilmore's on the pitch. And he wants it, to be honest, I don't think everybody else wants it as much as he does. A lot of them are very, very tired out there. When he gets the ball, he's not seeing a lot of white shirts in front of him, is he? You know, but he still wants to do the right things, play the right things. See, if you put Billy Gilmore in a red strip tonight, he would look OK, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. Referee's looking at his watch. Last Spain attack here. Rodri drives the shot with the left foot. Angus Gunn makes the save. England's under-21s have scored a ninth against Serbia tonight. And that is that in Seville. So job 
not done quite yet for Scotland in terms of qualification. Now they're hoping that Spain will do them a favour on Sunday because if Spain can go to Oslo and win and beat Norway or even draw against Norway, that will be enough for Scotland. Norway would not be able to get ahead of them. Scotland ran themselves into the ground this evening, thought they'd taken the lead in the second half through Scott McTominay's free kick. A marginal, marginal offside with Jack Hendry in the wrong position, ruling that out. Brilliant header from Alvaro Morata got Spain in front. Scotland then unluckily conceded the second, but they certainly leave Pat with heads held high and qualification still they're still in a fantastically strong position well, they, Scotland. They, Scotland will feel fed up tonight that's two losses in a row obviously with the England game as well and people may say oh this is terrible this is awful but you're in a campaign with Spain you're playing them away from home there might be these d little downs now and again however you can see what Scotland will try to do it was a grown up plan tonight almost come off but if it doesn't come off you shrug your shoulders you've learned something you move on to the next one there's a big disappointment with the injury again to Robertson tonight but looking at that team tonight I'm, I do as I mentioned before feel quite cheated that we never had that last five or ten minutes and um, because we lost that second goal out of an outrageous slap um, but other than that CB Clark just get the boys together and say We've got Georgia, and if at the beginning of the campaign you'd have said to us, beat them to go through, we'd have taken it. That is the next two chances. I'm sure the Scotland players, as they shake hands down there with their Spanish counterparts, are saying, do us a favour on Sunday, please. Norway have to beat Spain on Sunday. If they don't, Scotland are through. If they do, then Scotland know a win away at Georgia on Thursday, the 16th of November, will be their next opportunity to get it done. Full time here in Seville, Spain 2, Scotland 0. So wasn't to be on the night. Uh, Pat Nevin, Alistair Bruce Ball are still in Seville. Of course, uh, they will be for a few more minutes. We'll be joined again by James McFadden in a few moments as well, just to reflect on the night. But I mean, it's these tight margins, isn't it? Really, when you think if Scott McTominay, we'll talk a bit more about the Scott McTominay goal, which was disallowed. But if Che Adams had, had scored at that point when that was such a narrow miss that it had been 1-1, but it puts a whole different complexion on the game, doesn't it, at that point? And who knows whether Spain would have gone on to score the second goal? Yeah, it's a, it's a huge thing for Scotland. They, they know that they're going to be under pressure. It's like teams who play against Manchester City. Look, you're not going to get a lot of the ball. The opposition are going to get a lot more chances than you. But you have to be clinical when you get yours. And for Scotland, in the recent game against Norway, it was a masterclass and exactly that type of play. So I could see what was happening. I could see exactly what Stevie Clark was thinking. And, you know, it's a puncher's chance. You've got a puncher's chance. No more than that. But those little opportunities did come. And, you know, you talk, talk back to that free kick. Look, I, I don't hide the fact that I want Scotland to win the game. But I'm not biased enough to say, look, it was marginal. But the referee got that one right. Mm. You know, he was standing in front of the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper was impeded from his movement. And he was in an offside position. Ergo, offside. Yeah. Hurts, but it's offside. But I'll tell you what. It was only his foot, <laughs> it wasn't much. It shows you how close, as you say, Scotland were. And not only that occasion, but also the one that Che Adams came on. Maybe if I, I push up with the light, Che Adams going a little bit earlier, taking a little bit of pressure off Scotland, because at now now I can see we were falling further and further back. You need a striker on that can hold on the ball. So maybe we could have done that a wee bit earlier, but you know, other than that, you know, we were beaten by the better team in the night, and sometimes you shrug your shoulders and move on. Yeah, and, and Scott McTominay, Ali, you know, he's, uh, those two goals that he scored for Manchester United in the closing stages against Brentford have obviously rubbed off and, and, and ah. given him that boost of confidence, haven't they? But, but I mean, that would have been such an... I mean, people who didn't see it, just describe again what yeah. an amazing goal that would have been. Well, I mean, he surprised, he surprised me, Ellie, because, you know, I, I just don't expect that from Scott McTominay, but you should in, in this group. You know, he has been a tour de force for Scotland in terms of scoring the goals and all sorts of different goals, and that was a very different one. That's the kind of goal you'd expect. I mean, I'm not exaggerating, a, a Messi or a, or a Bruno Fernandes or a David Beckham back in the day to score because the ball is just three yards up from the byline. All the bodies gathered in the six-yard box, and you're expecting him to obviously whip it in at pace, 
but he certainly had lined up that far corner beyond Unai Simon and he took him by surprise and it had to be hit perfectly and it was and you're right Ellie, it, ju it just shows the confidence that is flowing through his veins I think he's taken it from Scotland actually into Manchester United mm. and it just and it it just remains um, with Scotland and actually he does he does look more dangerous for Scotland in those further forward positions yeah, didn't know, he Pat which yeah, he couldn't really be in tonight no and that, that is his best position by a, by a good distance but of course Manchester United how often is he going to be played there because Manchester United usually are world class players in that sort of position so it's a real shame for him but he'll still put in you know a, a tour de force where he's workload in the midfield but you're right that moment there and had that goal stood and I'll tell you what I nearly did you know, it took a long time for the referee to look at. Had that goal scored, what a brilliant way it would have been and fitting way to get Scotland into these championships, but it wasn't to be. Let's bring in James McFadden, who's been watching at home. Um, James, how many times were you off your sofa? How many times were you hiding behind the sofa? How many times was your head in your hands? Well, I, I was all of them when the Scott McTominay went in, the uh, goal went in because... Alex produced, uh, described it brilliantly. It's just a phenomenal goal, and there was a lot of confusion over why it was why it was chopped off as well. Confusion um, with VAR, surely not. Well, it was incredible because the referee was sent to the monitor. I mean, when you see the replay, it does look like Jack Henry's in an offside position, and you think that they're going to rule it out for offside, but they send the the referee to the monitor to check, and I think it's for you know a, a slight foul on on the goalkeeper Simon. But they it did, did change that, Faddy. They changed they it change, the well, stadium, yeah. They changed it, but I think, I, I'm just wondering if, because he's offside, are they then asking the referee to determine whether he's interfering with play? Yes. Now, the, the touch on Simon, however slight it is, is enough for it to be chalked off. However, there is no chance that Simon is stopping that from going in the top corner. So that, that, was, a, that was a moment where you're looking for... You know why is it been why is it been chopped off? But you know in the end, rightly so. Um, but it was a, it was a tough watch. Scotland were set up to get the draw uh, and looked actually more threatening, of course, when they go a goal behind. But it was just a, a poor performance, I think. Defensively, yep, yeah, solid until the goal goes in, then it changes it. But there was opportunities in the first half and the second half to maybe play it forward or. You know, just play it in behind for Lyndon Dykes to go and chase Ryan Christie to go and you know get Scotland up the pitch. It was like, you know, sitting waiting, waiting to be you know scored against, um, and it was it was disappointing. But I agree with Pat. You know, you can't have a, any any complaints. Spain were the better side. They forced the issue. They got their goals, and you know it's the the, the second goal. You know, Aaron Hickey slips, and the ball goes in, and. I know people say, well, what's the difference between 1-0 and 2-0? Well, the difference would have been a head-to-head -head record that they would have been better than Spain's for potentially, you know, winning the group. Of, of course, the qualification's still there. They still have to get it over the line. But that, that would have been huge, you know, even a 1-0 defeat. And you never, ever celebrate a defeat, but you look for a positive within that defeat to say head-to-head -head record's better than Spain's. We've still got a good chance of going and winning the group. Still got a chance of winning the group. It's going to be difficult. Um, but just disappointed. I thought tonight was going to be the night, and when that Scott, Scott McTominay goal goes in, you think, well, if you're going to have a smash and grab, that is the way to do it because what a goal it was. And I just feel for him because there's nothing he can do. You know, he's done everything right, and Jack Henry's just strayed slightly offside, um, and the goal has been, you know, ruled out, which is a, a real shame for, for us, obviously, you know, watching it, but for Scott McTominay as well, it would have been a huge moment for him. Right, let's get your positives then, because you said let's find some positives from this. And, you know, 1-0 might have been better than 2-0, but, but what made you feel, you know, optimistic about the future about today? Well, not so much uh, tonight's game. You know, I have to give the, the players credit because they stuck to the game plan. They defended really well at times, but you can't continue to allow Spain into dangerous areas because they will eventually find a way and they did. I think that the five games previous are the positive. The fact that, you know, Spain go to Norway, they have to get a, a result for themselves to qualify. Uh, and, and a draw or a, a win for Spain means that we qualify, you know, and that's it confirmed. So the positives are that, you know, we've made Spain really work for the result tonight. They've had to work so hard for it. Um, and we're still in a fantastic, still top of the group, still in a great position. Uh, and, and we can't just look too much to tonight's performance and result and, you know, rip it up and start again, if you like. It's, it's still, we're still heading in the right direction. 
and there's a lot more positive and, and happier nights to come for Scotland I'm sure of that my positives would be you've, you've lost Robertson as a negative Tierney's out as a negative yet Patterson and Hickey yep. went in those positions and looked fine and you're not sitting worried sick about the next games which in the, in the past <laughs> we would have done so the strength and depth that Davy Clark's brought into that team I think the, the back line of Portes, Hendry and McKenna I mean they fought and they battled and they chased and they made very very few mistakes tonight so and, and it's hard because you have to concentrate the entirety of that game um, so yeah you've lost 2-0 by the end we created one or two chances we could all see what the game plan is and the players knew it as well I think the walkout disappointed but they all under also understand is that'll happen sometimes and it'll go for you because mm -hmm. it's happened before and I'll, the walkout here losing 2-0 and still thinking we believe in Scotland and we believe in the manager. We'll come back to you in a second, guys. Let's get full-time news from the city ground. An absolutely crushing victory. <laughs>